la fa ui the president Member's motion with no legislative effect. Mr. Tony Chair will move a motion on reforming the tendering system to support local enterprises. Two members will move amendments to the motion. This Council will proceed to a joint debate on the motion and the amendments. Later, I will first call upon Mr. Tony Chair to speak and move the motion. Then I will call upon Mr. Duncan Chiu and Mr. and Dr. Stephen Wong to speak in sequence, but they may not move the amendments at this stage. The joint debate now begins. Members who wish to speak, please press the request to speak button. I now call upon Honourable Tony Chair to speak and move the motion. Mr. Tony Chair, thank you, President. I move the motion set out in the agenda. The sixth term of our chief executive election, some um, CE elect uh, Mr. John Lee said that uh, there would be four uh, tenets, uh, including enhancing Hong Kong's competitiveness and also in terms of identifying land uh, for uh, housing, um, there would be an enhancement in uh, efficiency, uh, effectiveness, and also uh, quantity. But then um, some 90% of the SMEs uh, have been shrinking in wake of the current economy. So how can we enhance our competitiveness? And therefore, for the construction sector, including the constituency that I represent, uh, that is the uh, landscaping and so on, if there is a serious uh, brain drain and uh, some of the consultancy firms are actually finding it hard to survive, then how can we ensure that there would be high efficiency and effectiveness and also high speed in order to ensure that we'll be able to implement all the housing projects as planned? So these are the problems that we have been encountering. That's the very reason why I'm moving this motion to reform the tendering system in order to support local enterprises. It's not just uh, for the interests of the sector. It's to help solve um, the housing and land problems in Hong Kong in order to enhance Hong Kong's overall competitiveness so that we can better serve uh, the Greater Bay Area as well as our state. President, in order to make sure that public funds are used uh, properly, that's why under the government procurement system, we would always consider the um, costs um, involved. I think uh, that's reasonable. But then uh, if only the lowest uh, bid wins, so that uh, there would be cutthroat uh, bidding, and uh, we also have a fee diving situation, as mentioned by the sector, and there would also be unhealthy competition to the extent that uh, the prices would be unreasonably low, and um, is they, these are called absolutely low bids, and that would affect um, the quality of both the products as well as the services. So when it comes to building and construction, if we have uh, unreasonably low costs, uh, that would over, often end up uh, with uh, projects that cannot be completed or even some claims are outside of uh, the estimates and even with um, overrun costs. So in the end, uh, it would end up with a very high cost or even overrun in costs. For example, in the third and fourth quarter of the of last year, if you look at uh, the main contracts are under uh, public works projects, at least uh, ten uh, projects are uh, costs uh, were only accounting for some fifty percent of the approved uh, project costs, or even up to sixty percent. Probably that has to do with the uh, filibustering and also the black clad violence uh, in recent years, and also because of a downturn in the economy. Well, the sector in order to make sure that there would be projects uh, to undertake, then they would just uh, try to suppress the um, bidding price. Uh, on the face of it, uh, that might help the Treasury in making savings. And yet, um, if the win winning bidder is not able to make ends meet, uh, then they would just uh, make sure that uh, the, uh, they would be able to break even. And um, in the end, uh, that might cause uh, safety or even quality issues. So will the contractors uh, resort to all, ways, all sorts of ways and means in order to apply for additional costs and also make claims? And in the end, it's the taxpayers uh, who will suffer. I think uh, that is one of the problems that we often encounter. 
and also for the professional consultancy services relating to construction, including uh, landscaping and also uh, land surveying and so on, and also project management and also supervision and so on. For uh, the relevant consultancy costs, very, very often it would just account for uh, several percentage point of the overall cost of the project. But then in order to maintain the quality and also progress of the project and also cost control, it plays a very important role. And therefore, professional consultancy services, uh, if the uh, bidding price is unreasonably low, then they would just uh, make sure that uh, they will just uh, do what they have uh, been paid for. And therefore, in terms of manpower and also experience of the staff uh, involved, uh, they might not be uh, as good as uh, they should have been. And that would also affect uh, this service quality in the end. Uh, they might have to change the design halfway through the project and there would also be cost overrun and there would also be quality issues and these are the risks that uh, would be involved. Uh, and also very often the, the sector would uh, have to lo work long hours and also the uh, income and also the workload might not be proportionate. And as a result of that, uh, many young people would change jobs and there is a, a brain drain problem that would affect uh, the uh, ecology of the, of the entire sector. In some cases, uh, we have got we have seen um, cost overrun and also uh, delays. Uh, so the sector will have to increase manpower in order to step up uh, supervision. And as a result of that, uh, we have seen an um, an expansion in the size of the civil service. And the private sector would find it even more difficult to retain talents or recruit staff. As a result, there would also be this uh, vicious cycle. In order to step up supervision, the administration has been. Um, uh, extending or increasing the uh, the process uh, of scrutiny and also in the contract terms, uh, they are also in including uh, more stringent terms. And as a result, contractors will have to increase manpower in order to meet unreasonable and also very cumbersome administrative work in the end. Working hours will become even longer and professionals will have little room for developing their potential and that is another vicious circle. So we will not be able to enhance uh, efficiency and uh, speed as well as uh, effectiveness. And very often, contractors would also um, have to uh, carry favor from the administration. And as a result, our contract terms would be inclined uh, towards the administration. And they will have to take up all the risks involved. Uh, and if uh, there are any unforeseen circumstances arising. And uh, if you look at uh, the, the uh, performance of the uh, consultants, uh, for example, if there is extensive uh, change in the uh, project scale and also the uh, extended time needed uh, for this council to scrutinize the projects and also because of inclement weather and force majority, as a result that the project might be extended and the workload would also increase tremendously. But then uh, under the uh, old system, the existing uh, contract system does not allow the consultancy firm to seek claims from the administration or increase service uh, fees. So the sector finds it very depressing and unreasonable. President, during the past few years, the administration has uh, reviewed the situation and uh, enhanced the uh, tendering system in order to lower the uh, ratio given to uh, low bidding costs. For example, they would consider the experience uh, of the contractors and there would be this uh, two envelope system and they would also give more weighting to the quality of the service and so on instead of uh, just uh, giving consideration to the cost. I think that should be welcome. But then the two envelope system still will not be able to address the uh, concerns of the SMEs and also the uh, startups uh, so that they would be given more opportunities. On the contrary, in fact, uh, multinationals and also uh, major um, contractors would also be more competitive. And if you look at uh, the tendering system of the government, there are also other problems. One of them is bundle tenders. They have also bundled up several projects unnecessarily, resulting in one single tender. And as a result of that, uh, SMEs will find it difficult to put in bids. And of course, in terms of management, the administration will find it easier. Secondly, it's also the uh, digitized uh, jargon. For example, they would require them to 
uh, apply ITs, for example, MIC, BIM, and so on. But then if you look at the government's uh, own scrutiny of uh, contracts and also the processing and also the uh, monitoring system, they have yet uh, to be uh, digitized. Uh, so the sector will also have to um, meet the requirements under the digitized uh, system as well as the paper-based system. And that would also increase uh, operating costs. So I'd like to ask the administration, including um, the uh, new term of uh, government that will be taking office uh, within a month or so, and therefore they will have to review the tendering system so that uh, they would come up with the lowest uh, reasonable cost in order to uh, eradicate cutthroat bidding and also um, local contractors should also be given priority. They should encourage innovation and they should avoid cutthroat bidding and they would also come up with um, a compensation mechanism for prolongation and they would also have to um, automate all the systems of the government and they would also have to reduce the terms that are outdated uh, and they are also not reasonable. So these are my remarks and I urge members to support my motion. I now call upon I now propose the question to you that uh, Mr. T uh, Tony Chair's motion be passed. Uh. Mr. Duncan Chu. President, first I would like to thank Mr. Tony Chair for moving this motion on reforming the tendering system to support local enterprises that different sectors and members of different stripes can once again discuss this issue in this chamber. I especially agreed with the um, uh, 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 bundled tenders and cutthroat bidding. For the past decade, a lot of the IT industry felt frustrated that the government had yet to uh, provide a certain uh, fair opportunity for SMEs in the tendering process. Even though the government has launched multiple measures to encourage the departments to use a locals uh, and startup products, for example, the pro-innovation procurement policy, as well as the public tr uh, sector trial scheme, as well as the smart government innovation lab. These are all very good attempts. However, uh, how effective are they? Can it really push the government to adopt more locally uh, uh, researched uh, products? According to the government response to the special FC question on the public uh, sector trial scheme, from the uh, last March to have altogether have subsidized 375 projects with about two, over 200 uh, projects. And during the pandemic, a lot of the SMEs, especially the IT enterprises, can benefit from it. If the government can change its mindset by taking the lead to use and procure uh, local technologies, which will uh, help a long way to help local enterprises and local startups and local IT enterprises which will help us to turn into an international IT hub. On, I've, I've, I've consulted the uh, IT bodies on this motion for other SMEs as well as for the companies who took part in the government procurement process. Some told me even though the government had lifted the technical score to the ratio of about 60 to 70 percent, and for the better quality uh, 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 products still see th uh, does not help them uh, when winning the bid. At the end, is still the lowest bid wins, as told by Mr. Tony Chair. And the new scoring system had yet to provide a clear uh, marking guidelines for innovation elements. The sector questioned that whether it can really uh, improve that competitiveness in the bidding process and hope that the government can improve the scoring system. I also proposed the government to consider those who took part in government uh, projects, for example, those obtained the government funding or with government subvention, uh, they can be at an extra score in the vetting process. In the IT sector, have raised different issues on procurement and tendering. For example, that after providing the service and products, they only pay by the by month or by the quarter, which puts pressure on a cash flow, especially to SMEs, which reduced the incentive to submit their bids. And also, uh, the contract breach uh, 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 compensation actually amounted to 30 to 40 percent of the total amount, which is another disincentive. President, even though the Hong Kong is a signatory to the WTO uh, agreement on the government procurement, however, uh, member states like South Korea and Singapore have uh, launched a policy 
supporting the SMEs, for example, in South Korea, require the government to uh, reach a target ratio of SME procurement about half of their total. About 10% of them must be new technology products and will worth the SMEs to formulate uh, at the checklist on a uh, stupefied um, products. And hopefully we can come with a target ratio and expenditure uh, uh, ratio and uh, proactively uh, foster the SMEs and startups. I so submit and urge the members can support my amendment. Dr. Stephen Wong. President, I would like to thank the original motion by Mr. Tony Chairs and urging the government to reform the tendering system to support local enterprises. They point out the importance of reforming the system. Since the tendering and the procurement system is just about money, it's about how to make use of the two mechanisms as a policy tools to help achieve the intended policy objectives. While the government not only need to be a smart consumer, it also become the uh, policy objective facilitator. I agree with uh, Mr. Che and Mr. Chu, the local technology should be a key consideration. Another consideration being that uh, environmental protection and social benefits, the ESG, for example, uh, reduce wasting a source and uh, reducing carbon emissions and for social benefits, including protecting the grassroots and workers and helping disadvantaged. Just imagine when the government have been aggressively pushing the SMEs and the financial sector to care about the ESG, uh, uh, requiring them to take care of ESG the way to do business and also uh, check their suppliers to contain ESG elements. Well, shouldn't they take a hard look at themselves to lead by example? And for the service contract, uh, uh, the government has lifted the ratio on the, the pay level. However, uh, yet to cover uh, social benefits elements. Even though the government procurement guidelines, the environmental protection elements is considered. However, there's no uh, express ratio, even for the uh, EPD. D uh, 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 183 specifications. The government have yet to state in the specifications that are the uh, technical score on uh, reducing carbon emissions. We can look at other countries on how the other countries adopt ESG elements, which is worthy of Hong Kong's reference. Take the UK for example. The past decade or so, they have been continuously enhancing and revising their own procurement guidelines uh, stipulated that the uh, COMS score on procurement um, assigning the minimum uh, ratio to ESG, which includes uh, supporting uh, startups and SMEs and social enterprises, encouraging creating new jobs and technology, uh, boosting uh, public health benefits, and uh, uh, well, uh, reducing uh, social gaps. So these are all contained in the government marking sheet. And for uh, sustainability, in 2021, the UK government further adjusts its guidelines to include the carbon reduction target and requirement. And the bidding enterprises must state in their tenant document that how their products and service can work towards decarbonization to reach carbon neutral. For well, the amendments can ensure that the government, while procuring or outsourcing a service to fulfill their corporate responsibility and promote social quality and balancing environmental protection. And I also checked the US and the EU have also have similar arrangements through the government procurement to implement decarbonization. For the developing countries like Brazil has just passed a new law a listing of requirements that could promote a government uh, green pro government procurement, for example, requiring the winning bidder to hire certain percent of women and or um, rehabilitated offenders, and how do we help disadvantage to procurement and promote social equality? President, from the above examples, uh, 
for developed and developing economies, their procurement procedures have inserted ESG elements, and yet Hong Kong is behind many of these places. My amendments are uh, hopefully they can uh, inject more ESG elements in this process to help the disadvantaged and the ESG to promote social quality and reduce the destruction to the environment and also to achieve a local decarbonization target as well to enhancing the overall social efficiency. President, I so submit urgent members support my amendments. Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury. Mr. President, first of all, I thank Mr. Tony Chan for moving the motion and Mr. Duncan Chu and Dr. Wong Yushan for moving amendments so that Myself and Under Secretary for Development can listen to members' views on this important topic. I listened to a lot of keywords just now, um, such as uh, local SMEs, startups, uh, ESG, environmental protection, and the underprivileged. So I'd like to first explain our procurement policy in general, and then I will respond to the specific points expressed, and then I will uh, listen to members' views and see what we can do next. In Mr. Chair's motion, he proposes more emphasis on creativity and innovation and reducing the weighting given to the lowest bid wins criterion on the government's tendering procurement systems so as to support local SMEs. Mr. Chu and Mr. Uh, Dr. Wong have moved amendments proposing that the government should enhance support for local IT enterprises and introduce environmental protection and social benefit elements in its procurement policy. These proposals are in line with the government's established procurement policy. The government's procurement principles are to encourage participation through open, fair and competitive procedures to facilitate departments in determining the most value for money one which best meets the public's needs while the bid prices also reflect the prevailing market level. Hong Kong has been a signatory to the Agreement on Government Procurement of the World Trade Organization since 1997, and the government strictly abides by the principles of the above in its procurement effort to ensure open and fair competition among domestic and foreign suppliers and service providers regardless of scale. However, at the same time, departments should also take note of the local situation and actively promote the development of local SMEs and IT enterprises so that they will not be disadvantaged by the agreement. On supporting L uh, SMEs and local startups to encourage competition and lower the threshold, especially for startups and SMEs, as mentioned just now, departments in general should not set tenderous experience as an essential requirement for participating in non works procurement, regardless of the project value, unless absolutely necessary and with prior approval. And to avoid placing SMEs and startups in an unduly disadvantageous position, even under the circumstances which the uh, tender experience can be included, it should generally account for no more than 15% of the total technical mark in the marking scheme. And to further encourage competition, departments in general do not impose on capital size criterion on bidders. We also encourage departments to split large contracts into smaller ones as far as possible to avoid bundled tenders to ensure startups and SMEs can be given the opportunity to participate in government tenders. Apart from procurement policy, we also strive to support SMEs' participation in government tenders. The Support and Consultation Center for SMEs of the Trade and Industry Department provides support services for SMEs, including information on government procurement policies and procedures to facilitate SMEs in establishing business relations with government departments and uh, application to be included in the list of suppliers for government departments as well as the latest news on government tender notices. On supporting innovation, to encourage departments in adopting innovative proposals and to facilitate participation in government procurement by startups and SMEs, the government implemented the pro-innovation government procurement policy for non-works procurement in April 2019, which includes requiring departments to increase the technical and product quality weightings in their marketing schemes. In addition, a certain weighting should also be given to innovative proposals, including those related to the application of technology, environmental protection, and social care. 
Hence, in procuring non-works goods and services, departments have widely adopted the new marketing scheme under the pro-innovation government procurement policy and increased the technical weightings from 30 to 40 percent in the past to 50 to 70 percent now, with marks reserved for innovative proposals submitted by tenderers. Price weightings have correspondingly dropped to 30 to 50 percent. In fact, since implementation of the new policy in April 2019, about 90 percent of the goods and services procured by government departments have adopted the new marking scheme, and over 70 percent have been awarded to bidders with the highest technical weightings. So it is not always the case that the lowest bidder wins as far as government procurement is concerned. The government also encourages public bodies and subvented organizations to place more emphasis on creativity and innovation and reduce the weighting on price and in corporate factors, such as support for local SMEs in their procurement policy. On supporting INT enterprises, we have been actively promoting government departments and public bodies' adoption of technical solutions developed by local INT sector, including universities and startups, so as to foster collaboration among the government, industry, academia and research institutes and promote commercialization of R&D results. The Public Sector Trial Scheme of the Innovation Technology Commission provides additional funding support for R&D projects of IT companies in Hong Kong to produce prototypes and conduct trials for public sector organizations. The Smart Government Innovation Lab, or Smart Lab, of OGO invites industry players to submit information technology solutions to improve public service. In addition, through government procurement, our bureau strives to enhance government departments' knowledge in and application of digitization in order to streamline procedures and enhance efficiency. We'll also jointly organize a digital applied technology sourcing fair in June this year, next month, that is, with the Government Logistics Department of the Hong Kong Productivity Council. We have consulted different departments to understand the difficulties and the pain points they have in providing gov uh, public services. We've also invited the Hong Kong Science and Technology Park and Cyberport to assist in approaching suitable INT suppliers to participate in the fair and establish a procurement platform for suppliers to showcase to government departments their technology solutions to assist departments in streamlining workflow and digitizing data management. About 40 INT suppliers, including quite a lot of local SMEs and startups, will take part in it. Apart from establishing an online platform to help suppliers promote their solutions to government departments during the fair, the Government Logistics Department will also adopt an online-offline um, approach to provide matching service on the day of the fair and arrange for negotiation between departments and suitable potential suppliers. After the fair, the GLD will assist interested departments and suppliers in their follow-up work and draw up standard procurement forms and terms for adoption and reference by policy bureaus and departments to further streamline the relevant INT procurement procedures. On protecting grassroots workers and the underprivileged, since 2019, we have revised the procurement policy to enhance protection for non-skilled workers employed by the government service providers. As mentioned before, technical weighting must account for at least 50% of the total score, with the weighting to the proposed wage level not less than 25%. According to the Labour and Welfare Bureau's survey, there was a net increase of 14% in the median wage of non-skilled workers in non-skilled workers' contracts awarded by the government since September 2020 as a result of the improvement measure. On promoting environmental protection, the government procurement policy also caters for other social benefits. The innovation solution adopted by departments may include different technology elements which can help the government achieve its objectives. For example, green materials can be procured, and uh, I understand Dr. Wong just mentioned ESG and uh, that we can also encourage waste reduction in service provision. We also have a green procurement policy. Departments are encouraged as far as possible and where economically rational to purchase green products and avoid single-use disposable items. According to the list of green specifications of the Environment Bureau, 
in order to actively promote carbon reduction, waste reduction, and recycling economy. At present, there are about 180 products and services on the green procurement list, such as computer equipment and products, office equipment, and the property management services. The government procured green products and services totaling 8.6 billion Hong Kong dollars between 2015 and 2020. And we have included green elements such as environmental protection, energy saving, carbon emission reduction, and government works projects. We've set up the government green bond program, which has subsidized 14 projects so far. And for example, the West Kowloon government offices adopt many energy efficient and renewable energy technologies, such as photovoltaic energy generation, solar hot water system, demand control of fresh air supply with sensors, and rainwater harvesting system, which is appreciated by the Hong Kong Green Building Council. Another example is Organic Resources Recovery Center, the Phase 1 or OPAC 1, which converts food waste into biogas for electricity generation, thereby reducing annual greenhouse gas emission by 42,000 tons. On procurement of public works projects, the Development Bureau provides detailed procurement guidelines for works departments on top of the general procurement policy I just went through. The tender exercises of public works projects and consultancy services abide by the principles of achieving best value for money and maintaining open and fair competition, which are conducted according to clear guidelines and well-established principles. And similarly, we do not adopt the lowest bid wins as the assessment criterion in tender evaluation. Apart from considering tender prices, we also examine tenderers' technical competence, innovation technology, creativity. For design and build contracts and highly complex projects, the weighting of the technical score can be as high as 50 to 60 percent of the overall score. The procuring department will also examine the reasonableness of the tenderer with the high score. For tenders with unreasonably low prices, even if they obtain the highest overall scores, they will not be recommended for acceptance. This will prevent some tenderers from submitting uh, cutthroat bids. On taking forward to major infrastructure projects, we abide by the principle of development come conservation, and we also actively promote low carbon construction, emission reduction, and green procurement, including the use of recycled and green construction materials. For tenders, we have a mechanism of awarding marks to technical proposals on environmental protection, including greening and carbon emission, digital operation, and innovation. To allow consultancies and companies of different scale um, like Mr. Tony Chair said, to participate in tender exercises. We've broken down public works procurement items into different categories based on project categories and the tender value. And when circumstances permit, the split large works contracts into smaller manageable ones for local SMEs to have um, the opportunity to take part in the tender. Um, Mr. President, the Under Secretary for Development and I, myself will take views from members and uh, Upon conclusion of the debate, we will respectively give a consolidated reply afterwards. Thank you. Mr. Chen Hock Fong. Thank you, President. Well, SMEs um, is the lifeline of our economy. They play a very important role, and different countries are also coming up with uh, policies and uh, procurement policies that would uh, facilitate the operation of SMEs. And that would also be in line with the um, uh, fairness uh, principles of administration. I think that's uh, exactly what we should do. According to some estimates, uh, some 98% of our uh, corporations or companies are SMEs, and uh, the people that they employ would also account for 95% of the working force. And uh, under the government's uh, procurement policy, well, the second objective is to uh, facilitate the, the um, operation of SMEs, uh, and we should also um, uh, facilitate the operation of SMEs in order to enable them to survive. So I'm glad that today's motion is about reforming the tendering system to support local enterprises so that they can have uh, more room for maneuvering. But then uh, very often the administration would uh, introduce uh, facilitation uh, policies uh, to facilitate SMEs uh, taking part in government's uh, procurement system. Still, we believe that uh, the current system benefits are the larger corporations instead of the SMEs, taking outsourcing of cleansing services by the FEHD as an example. We have done some uh, statistics. Um, during the past uh, three years, some 96% uh, some ninety six contracts would be expiring, and um, 
four contractors managed to get some 53% of the total number of contracts. And if you look at uh, property management of public housing estates during the past three years, 118 contracts expired and uh, eight companies managed to take up some 52% of the total number of contracts. Of course, uh, we would not be suppressing those uh, who are doing well. But then uh, when it comes to procurement contracts, uh, we should increase the space for survival for SMEs and we should consider it uh, from three aspects. Uh. First, uh, large contracts uh, should be uh, divided into smaller contracts. Uh, some members have already touched on that in order to increase the chances of winning the contract so that we would not see a, an over-concentration of contracts into uh, a small number of uh, contractors. If you look at uh, the examples that I cited, uh, in fact, uh, one particular company managed to get a contract sum of uh, up to $100 million. Other smaller companies will simply not be able to take up that size of uh, that kind of contracts. And therefore, we have to make sure that uh, for companies without uh, a lot of experience in taking government contracts, they should also be able to uh, win the bids. And um, we have already got two units in administration. One is uh, NW1 and NW2 for the former. That um, Well, they would be able to bid for contracts uh, lower than $550 million. And uh, for the second type, uh, there is no ceiling. But then uh, for the SMEs, this will still be a very uh, high amount. Uh, in the past, um, we also had uh, the situation whereby the performances of contractors would vary. If we are able to break that up into smaller contracts, then more companies will be able to join and uh, there would be a healthy competition that will also help enhance the quality of service by these contractors. And we are not just considering the uh, cost. Uh, given the uh, uh, downturn in the economy, we have uh, seen cutthroat uh, competition, but then uh, for service quality, that would also be compromised, uh, and that's what we have been criticizing because according to some uh, media reports, uh, there are also cutthroat bidding resulting in exploitation of workers. And uh, we have already uh, put in place a scoring mechanism, for example, innovation and uh, other, res other factors, but then uh, there should also be a reasonable estimate in order to uh, squeeze out uh, the unreasonable um, uh, bits. Um, so that's also uh, that would also involve a change in the uh, mentality of the government departments. Uh, they should also um, allow for reasonable uh, payment installments uh, so that uh, SMEs uh, would not be uh, subject to uh, pressure of cash flows because uh, cash flows uh, often would be the uh, core problems that they have encountered. If you look at the UK system, what well, they would uh, require them to uh, uh, pay upfront uh, uh, within five days and then within 30 days, they would also have to pay the full sum. And if the administration is able to simplify the uh, procedures um, and streamline the process, then more SMEs will be able to uh, join the bids. So I support the original motion as well as the amendment. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Dennis Long. Thank you, President. As early as 1997, the, um, the Hong Kong government has already joined the uh, WTO's uh, procurement uh, um, convention so that um, well, we will have to treat uh, all bidders um, on a par. And for government contracts, uh, they would often look at uh, the cost factor. They would also have to ensure that there would be open and fair competition. And in order to get uh, the best um, um, uh, price, uh, they would often look at uh, the performance and also the uh, uh, the bidding price and whether or not they are able to comply with all the terms and conditions in the contract. But then if you attach too much importance uh, to economic benefit, then you would often be inclined to taking the lowest uh, bid. And as a result, uh, the service quality would also be compromised. And uh, on top of that, we often have uh, bundle tenders and you would also look at past uh, track record and also their scale of operation. You would ignore the uh, innovation factor and other factors. and. Um, the most important thing is that uh, you would also be lowering your requirement on uh, labor rights and so on. And as a result, uh, they would sometimes uh, put in bits uh, that would be lower than reasonable cost in order to ensure that they would be able to make the best out of it. So very often, the workers would have to lock, work long hours and their pay would be low and uh, they, they seldom have uh, good uh, employment benefits. And therefore, the administration should review the system. And uh, they should also take up uh, protecting labor rights as their top priority. But in the 2018 policy address, the administration announced that uh, starting from uh, the 1st of April 2019, they would be introducing a series of measures in government contracts, including 
a scoring system and the technical score would also be enhanced and also the uh, end of uh, contract uh, payment would also have to be uh, increased and uh, workers would also be able to enjoy uh, statutory holidays and they would also be able to get 150 uh, percent during their um, rest days and so on and uh, they would also they would, they should also be required to um hire the uh, workers uh, for at least three years and there would also be another review in December 2020 but then very often these are patchy measures and uh, for workers of uh, outsourced contractors uh, they would get a uh, little benefit and very often they simply would not be benefiting from this for example some of the cleaning workers uh, have seen their workload tremendously increase and yet uh, their pay has not been increased accordingly and also because of the uh, contract terms, uh, well, very often workers um, under different contracts would get uh, different payments. And uh, for those uh, under the old contracts, very often they would just uh, be getting paid more or less the same as uh, the uh, statutory minimum wage. And uh, when they have to rely on this for their livelihood, we will have to ensure that they would be able to make a decent living out of uh, their work. <coughs> well, while we criticize the government for outsourcing all the uh, jobs, very often they would come up with different excuses. For example, because uh, this would be seasonal uh, in nature, and uh, these are not uh, permanent jobs and so on. But then uh, very often they would uh, contract it out for three years, five years, or even over 10 years. Well, we, we uh, Notice that uh, some of these jobs are rather professional in nature and there aren't that many uh, in the market um, and uh, yet the administration would uh, say that uh, these are short term in nature and yet um, whether or not it's uh, um, short term or long term in nature, very often they would just uh, outsource it uh, anyway. And uh, some of these jobs might be needed uh, on a permanent basis uh, that would not be able to really save cost. Uh, and the service standard has not been improved. Uh, and yet uh, we have seen a lot of problems. According to the uh, statistic, in the last three years, uh, the number of uh, the departments and employing the largest number of outsourced workers, uh, they are the uh, FEHD, the LCSD, and also the uh, government property agency, and also um, the um, the housing department. But then uh, for these outsourced workers, they would account for um, some, uh, well, the ratio between civil servants uh, and outsourced workers would be one to seven. And uh, the largest number could be up to 239. And uh, you're talking about some 15,000 workers uh, in total. So they're actually abusing them and they're actually abusing the system. We believe that uh, we should uh, reform the, the existing system in order to improve uh, labor rights. And uh, for some of the uh, uh, jobs that are permanently required, uh, we should also make them permanent. Thank you. Next, uh, Mr. Bill, uh, Mr. Bill Tang. Thank you. Just now, my colleague uh, Dennis Leung has already talked about uh, the uh, labor rights uh, under government's uh, procurement system. And um, I'll focus on government's uh, procurement system in particular. Since the uh, British colonial government, they've already signed the government procurement uh, agreement, uh, that is GPA, under the WTO. So whether or not uh, it's government departments or public bodies, so long as uh, the um, price. I can give an example. If it's uh, over $1.42 million, uh, then they will have to undertake this uh, global tendering exercise. And the administration would, of course, come up with various excuses and they say that uh, this principle has to be modified. For example, for local startups and also for some green products, uh, they would resort to different approaches. But then uh, still, they have yet uh, to reach uh, what we would like them to do. For example, I particularly agree with uh, Dr. Uh, Wong Yunshan. They will have to modify their regs in order to achieve a certain objective. And therefore, I think we are more or less um, on the same track. That is, we will have to increase uh, our support for local SMEs in order to achieve uh, better social um, value. Well, um, some examples have been given. I'd like to give you an example of uh, South Korea. Well, in 2020, it's about a school catering service, and that was amended uh, 10 years ago. So for school um, uh, meal suppliers, they will have to use um, um, the uh, Korean uh, Agriculture Society's uh, suppliers. So priority will have to be given 
so that uh, local suppliers will be given top priority. They would also uh, kind of ban the import of uh, such products. So that has been welcomed by Korean farmers. And that might be in breach uh, with the WTO uh, GPA terms. Uh, and yet the administration of uh, South Korea insisted on doing this. So it's not just about uh, procuring from a Korean company. It's exactly that um, for every um, mouth of um, rice that you consume um, is from Korean farmers. So those are the Korean uh, procurement system in order to achieve a particular objective. So that's uh, being done in South Korea. And my colleague uh, Duncan Chiu and also Dr. Wong Yun Shan has, have both uh, made very brilliant remarks in those areas. So given the epidemic, we understand that the administration has uh, done something out of the ordinary and uh, the normal procurement process might not have been at tier two. So can we also um, look at uh, the current um, epidemic situation so that we can also procure in mass um, products uh, developed by local scientists, which might be um, beneficial to fighting the epidemic. I can give you an example. We have a local IT team or an entrepreneur, okay? Um, he's a Mr. Hoi, and uh, in the Guangzhou Hospital, he was able to convince um, the Guangzhou Hospital in procuring this uh, centralized uh, air conditioning system in order to um, filter the air to screen out uh, the virus. And I think there are many uh, similar products that are equally beneficial, if not uh, more. So we can also encourage entrepreneur, entrepreneurs to do it. For example, in the HKUSD, they have this uh, nanotechnology um, laboratory. They have this uh, filtering screen. In fact, uh, they have already applied uh, uh, this uh, nanotechnology so that, uh, well, even for some window type uh, air conditioners, they can use the filter. And that would also help schools uh, to screen out uh, harmful virus and so on. And they would also offer free service, uh, free installation service uh, for schools and so on. So can we do something similar in order to encourage these uh, contractors to provide uh, both equipment and services because of this uh, particular point in time is a very special time. And therefore, can we do a bit more in order to help local startups and also to ensure can we and can we make sure that uh, local IT products can also um, be used uh, more often. So I support both the original motion as well as the two amendments. Thank you. Dr. Lo Wai Kwok. Mr. President, first of all, I thank Mr. Tony Chair for moving the motion and Mr. Duncan Chiu and Dr. Stephen Wong for moving amendments. In the, in the motion, it says that the council urges the government to reform the tendering procurement system so as to support local enterprises. The BPA and myself are in support of this motion. As a member of the council representing the construction sector, I have uh, put forward my suggestion to the government and uh, put questions to the government on reforming the tendering system. First, in applying for funding with the Finance Committee of the LegCo, Parallel tendering should be carried out so that once funding approval is sought, works can commence as soon as possible, and that the tender prices should, as far as possible, be reflected in the, the approved project estimate. Second, I requested the government to split large contracts into smaller manageable ones for balanced participation by uh, local SMEs for the healthy development of the industry. I understand the Development Bureau has taken on board this suggestion and issued guidelines or circular to works departments. Instead of implementing large contracts, when tender exercises are to be carried out as far as possible, the large contracts should be split into smaller ones and SMEs should be allowed to place bits uh, higher than the threshold um, on projects of a simpler nature. The cap on tender prices for small to medium-sized contractors should also be slightly uh, adjusted upwards to encourage wider participation. In recent years, 
the problem is that uh, we have seen unreasonably low bids, undermining healthy competition. And the winning bids usually are way lower than the uh, price set out in the approved project estimates. There may be lots of problems stemming from it. For example, it may affect works progress, the quality of works. It may also um, deter new comers to the industry. This will affect public interest in the end of the day. The Hong Kong Institute of Engineers or the Institute earlier set up a working group to study the government procurement policies. In relation to procurement of works, contracts and consultancy services, the Institute has put forward some recommendations. We are now proceeding with Construction 2.0 and that uh, government works projects will play a, a more pivotal role in the future. So the assessment criteria currently adopted for complex projects, that is 50 for technical um, weighting and 50 for price weighting, should be more widely adopted. Second, although there is a mechanism to prevent cutthroat bids for consultancy services contracts, in order to prevent um, unreasonably low bids in getting the adv uh, the advantage, the upper hand, uh, the unreasonably low bids should be removed and the bidder should be uh, disqualified. Next, as unreasonably low bids may also lead to abuse of the claims mechanism, the Institute suggests that um, the there should be a certain weighting um, accorded to the past uh, claims records of the bidders so that um, the government can be more prudent in tender evaluation. My sector and myself are of the view that we need to catch up, catch up with the times and we need to catch the uh, I and T trend. We need to incorporate uh, environmental protection elements, and we need to improve the assessment criteria so as to provide a true level playing field for all uh, participants in the industry, uh, regardless of scale, so that we can achieve the greatest social benefit. I so submit, and I support the motion as well as the amendments. Mr. Chen Kin Po, thank you, Chairman. The Tendering and procurement system in Hong Kong have been under fire for many years. Be it the procedures and the uh, procurement for works or the tendering for works, con con uh, works contracts, uh, there have been many criticisms made. And uh, just now, uh, members have spoken on uh, cost overruns and other problems. Now, in other countries, this tendering system is also widely used. Um, and they are working well. And many countries have stipulated that in the tender exercises, that should be the ESG element and SMEs should be allowed to participate. These are things Hong Kong do not have. I think it's because the system is getting too rigid and that we haven't done anything about it. I thank Mr. Tony Chair for his motion. I hope that after the um, motion has been passed, the government will make improvements so that we can uh, improve uh, the situation. At the moment, there are a number of technical requirements. Once a bidder meets the technical uh, requirement in a brief, the lowest bid wins. This is largely the case, especially on outsourcing um, service contracts, such as cleaning service contracts. Cutthroat bids are submitted just to win government contracts. At the end of the day, frontline cleaning workers bore the brunt, and that is why in April 2019, the government revised the assessment criteria and that the tender weighting should not be less than 50% and price weighting should not be about, uh, higher than 50%. The Ombudsman appreciates this improvement, but there are also views that the problem is not tackled at source, because even if you increase the weighting of the technical score, you may not be able to meet the social needs. Uh, so I support the motion and the amendments. As far as the tender system is concerned, apart from um, technical aspects and the price aspect of the contract, we also need to consider uh, environmental protection and how we can safeguard the interests of frontline workers and the underprivileged. In fact, uh, in 2013, the UK government enacted an act that is uh, on public services and then social value. 
The Act provides that in awarding public contracts, the socioeconomic element should be taken into account so that bids will only be awarded after these elements have been fully considered. This allows more SMEs to take part in the bidding process, and this has always been our criticism on Hong Kong's system. So rather than having minor improvements, we should have a total reform. We should draw on the UK's experience so that we have a more balanced approach between the technical and price weightings. And there are organizations uh, believing that uh, it's all right for the government to use its own staff instead of outsourcing the services, such as cleaning services. And yet there are also other, there may also be other problems stemming from it. I think the government may consider this option. The government should maybe look into it. And there is also a criticism, criticism that the works project, uh, works costs are very high and it's difficult for outsiders to give accurate estimates. According to the Singapore experience, the Singaporean government would adopt a more um, encouraging approach. For example, the Works Department would first conduct a pre-market uh, pretender research and get all the information and hold briefing sessions for interested bidders. And before the briefing session, even the, I mean, the government would even um, negotiate with the prospective bidders. And that is why um, contracts awarded in Singapore are strictly scrutinized by the Singaporean government. I'm not sure if Hong Kong should follow suit, but at least we should uh, look into um, the this active approach. Next, Mr. Edward Lau. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank Mr. Tony Chair for moving this motion on reforming the tendering system so that we now have an opportunity to discuss the uh, problems with a tendering system in Hong Kong. This issue has always been close to my heart, and pre I have either put uh, oral questions and written questions in this council to the government, urging the government to reform the tendering system. Indeed, there are many flaws in our current tendering system, and this motion is timely. Under the current epidemic, many SMEs are struggling to stay afloat. So reforming the tendering system will provide a boost to uh, SMEs. And we can ensure health, a healthy market by improving the tendering system. And we should avoid lowest bid wins, and that should be a, the lowest reasonable cost for different tenders, so as to help um, SMEs of various sectors. Now, let me give you some information. In 2020, the Development Bureau uh, published a report in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, 22 works contracts were awarded, and the winning bid And the winning bids were uh, significantly uh, a departure from the approved project estimates. In other words, it's only 70% of the approved project estimate. In other words, we provided funding approval, and yet the highest bid was only 70% of the amount. And 30% was, uh, six, was 60 or 50% lower than the APE approved project estimates. This represents, of course, keen competition. But it's not just about keen competition. My concern is, is a vicious competition. The returned tender price turned out to be far lower than the approved project estimates carefully scrutinized by government experts and approved by LegCo. It's as low as just 50 or 60 percent. Now, we are concerned that uh, the quality will be compromised or that they may place a, a very low bid and after winning the bid, they may ask for additional um, funding by items. Now, I don't know whether in recent years, because of the uh, low bids winning the contracts, we see illegal workers, we see more fatal industrial accidents. 
I suppose the Development Bureau also relate, um, cited these figures when answering members' questions, and that shows there is a problem with uh, occupational safety and health, uh, and this can be sh shown in the number of fatal cases. This is not healthy at all. Previously, we suggested that apart from the two-envelope, two-stage approach, we can also determine the lowest reasonable cost for tenders, and that we can uh, exclude the uh, un excessively high and low bids uh, in the in a tender exercise to avoid unreasonably unreasonably low bids winning the contract. Perhaps more should be done on the two envelope two stage approach and make further adjustments to the weightings of the scores. So through today's discussion, I hope that we can provide support to local SMEs and maintain a healthy uh, environment for the market. And more importantly, we need to catch up with the times be it construction contracts or other tenders, it seems that uh, there is no innovation to speak of. We're unable to encourage the wide adoption of technology uh, or innovative methods in their um, tender bids. Perhaps the government hasn't incentivized them to do so. So apart from reasonable costs, Innovative elements that should be incorporated in the tender exercises, and a certain rating should be accorded to it, so as to further improve the tendering system. I so submit. Thank you. Mr. Zhao Xiutong. President, first I'd like to thank Mr. Tony Chair for moving this motion, enabling me to have this chance to express my views about uh, the um, government tendering system. I support Mr. Chair's original motion as well as the amendments uh, moved by Mr. Duncan Chiu and uh, Dr. Wong Yun Shan. In particular, Mr. Tony Chen mentioned in his uh, opening speech that uh, the current system would mean that uh, workers have to look, work long hours and the income is disproportionate to the workload. And, Ms. and Dr. Wong Yun Shan also said that we will have to introduce uh, social um, effectiveness or social benefit factors and so on. I think uh, I share those sentiments. And therefore, I'd like to um, express my views as well as uh, uh, recommendations uh, in this area. Well, government is the biggest uh, user of outsourced uh, services. According to, informa to the information, the LCSD, the Housing Department, the FDHD, and also the GPA are the major departments uh, using outsourced services. And uh, they are actually hiring um, non-technical workers um, uh, in excess of uh, 30,000. We understand that there are many problems with regard to the system. The administration has often chosen the lowest bidder in awarding contracts, and as a result, our workers have been exploited. And the administration has also said uh, a number of times that they'd be reviewing the system. Yes, some improvements have been made, and yet um, price uh, factor is, also, is still very much the most important consideration. And as a result, uh, this will si still shock the entire system. And uh, for occupational safety and workers' uh, rights, they have not been properly protected. And therefore, I hope that uh, in outsourcing services and so on, this scoring mechanism will have to take into account more factors other than the price uh, score and also the technology score. They would also have to look at uh, the social corporate responsibility of uh, the enterprises in order to ensure that, that there would be better safeguards uh, for the workers in order to reduce or eliminate exploitation. I would suggest that other than the uh, technology and other factors, uh, there should also be an additional term. That is, uh, if the g contractor is able to provide a better pay than government departments, then they should be given extra score in order to encourage them to uh, improve the pay and remuneration of um, the workers. And uh, labor relations uh, and also the wastage rate of the contractors should also be taken into account in order to encourage them to maintain good uh, labor relationship and also to in, uh, to maintain a, st a stable workforce. I'm sure we will not um, disagree that for government uh, services and contracts, uh, they should be given to 
a company whereby the uh, labor relations are very bad and so on. And thirdly, I suggest that uh, the scoring system should also incorporate uh, the labor rights and also occupational safety track records so that there would be a demerit point system. So that uh, for severance pay and also long service payments and also um, uh, occupational incidents and so on, those will also be taken into account in order to encourage them to comply with uh, labor legislation and uh, labor rights. In fact, uh, the occupational safety of some of the contractors are worrying. Between 2018 and 20, the Labor Department looked at uh, 555 contractors uh, engaging non-professional or um, non-technical workers, and they've also conducted some 715 inspections uh, on occupational safety. And they've issued 233 written notices and also uh, 17 um, improvement notices and so on. So the situation has been rather alarming. In other words, uh, the contractor's uh, occupational safety situation is something to be concerned about. President, um, improving the uh, outsourcing system has been a matter of concern to the community for a long time, and we've been following up on this for many years. I hope that uh, through this uh, motion debate, uh, the administration can attach more importance to that, and they should also review the outsourcing system so that uh, they'd be lowering the ratio of uh, projects uh, outsourced uh, to contractors. In the long run, they should just uh, eliminate it altogether. And also for outsourced workers, uh, uh, pay and remuneration, and also their uh, occupational safety, we should not just uh, uh, bury our head in the sand. We should look into that uh, squarely. Thank you. These are my remarks. Next, uh, Jeffrey Lam. Thank you, President. We are discussing a motion urging the administration to reform the tendering system of uh, port bureaus and, port and departments to support local enterprises. We should also give a, a lower weighting to the lowest uh, bid. Uh, well, as a businessman, I agree that uh, in the tendering system, we should also introduce an element to support local enterprises. The SAR government is now adopting this uh, two envelope system in awarding consultancy contracts and also public works uh, projects contracts. The so-called two envelope, subst envelope system includes a technical score and also a price score. And uh, for the technical proposal, it would account for some 40 to 50 percent of the total score. And the emphasis would be on their experience and also their track records and so on. Experience is very important, I agree. But then does it mean that uh, there, should also, there should not be any adjustments so that for smaller contractors or even um, uh, new companies, they should still have a chance to bid? The um, BPA has suggested um, on numerous occasions that uh, we should review the tendering system with the uh, Northern Metropolis and also uh, Land Out Tomorrow uh, infrastructure projects uh, um, coming up. We should, we, we will need to uh, uh, contract out many uh, of these contracts. Uh, I hope that uh, it can be more flexible so that we can take on board uh, more local enterprises which are competent. We can also include an element of IT so that incentives could be given to uh, make sure that they would make best use of our uh, local technology. I'd like to take the opportunity to look into tenderings, uh, to look into the procurement systems issues. The existing uh, procurement system is under uh, is regulated uh, by a piece of legislation, and it has to do with the WTO's uh, GPA, and um, it provides that uh, if we procure anything more than 1.4 million dollars, uh, then for services and products, uh, will have to be done by way of an open tendering system to ensure that we'll be able to get the uh, the most economical bits. But then uh, there is no definition on what's meant by this. Well, during the uh, early days of the epidemic, uh, there was um, this uh, short supply of uh, face masks, and many people have to go out and uh, scramble for whatever is on, on, on the racks. Uh, so that was the most difficult time for Hong Kong. And uh, within a matter of a few weeks, in Hong Kong, I managed to start uh, a surgical mask uh, factory. We would supply surgical masks at cost uh, to the public. And uh, if we were able to manufacture our own face masks, and uh, we managed to introduce this subsidy scheme, and we encourage local enterprises to manufacture our own masks, and Hong Kong people are no longer required uh, to line up in queues uh, in order to buy a pack of uh, face masks. And still, the administration is adopting this uh, standard, and as a result, uh, 
um, overseas uh, bidders managed to win the contract. Uh, so that's very hard for local manufacturers because the administration had encouraged our local enterprises to manufacture our wrong marks. How come you're not giving us support? And for the most um, economic, uh, uh, economically uh, efficient, uh, it means that uh, we will have to sell it um, um, at, low, at a low price. And if the administration still adopts this um, lowest uh, bid wins um, approach, then if you'd like to get the best service and you'd like to get it quick, I think this is simply um, uh, uh, unrealistic. For example, uh, at the Penny Bay Quarantine Center, we also had a situation whereby the uh, lunch boxes or the meal boxes uh, were far from satisfactory because the quality was too low. Because the administration simply went for the lowest bids, and uh, as a result, the uh, contractor would just uh, suppress the cost uh, in order to come up with uh, a box, a meal box uh, that can win the contract. So only when there was problem did the administration resort to other contractors. So at extraordinary time, we should adopt extraordinary measure, and therefore the administration has to learn from the sorry saga in order to be more uh, humanistic in um, undertaking this tendering system. Only if you're able to do that uh, will you be able to meet the needs of, our soci of our society. These are my remarks, sir. Yes, um, Mr. Chen Puilang, the government's uh, procurement system has ignored local enterprises, and as a result, SMEs find it difficult to join government procurement system. In recent years, they have introduced some new policies to assist uh, local enterprises and SMEs to join such bids. The result has not been very satisfactory. We have tens of thousands of uh, SMEs, accounting for some 98% of the total number of companies in Hong Kong. Between 2019 and 2020, only 12 SMEs have been able to get uh, the, uh, the have managed to join the list uh, of um, approved uh, uh, contractors, and uh, that would account for some 39% of the total number of our contracts. And four SMEs have also been awarded contracts, uh, and they've managed to win major contracts. Uh, and the contract sum was about 42% uh, of the total APEs. So uh, under the ep epidemic, uh, SMEs operations have been very difficult, and the administration procurement system doesn't help. The government's uh, current procurement system would uh, aim at uh, assisting them in joining uh, the bids. For example, the technical scores, uh, ratio, or proportion would be enhanced, uh, and also their experience would not be the essential requirement or prerequisite uh, for joining the bid. And yet, uh, fundamentally, you have not changed the policy so that SMEs development should become one of the uh, priority objectives of the administration, and as a result, SMEs have not been able to uh, join government's uh, tenders uh, on a large scale. The administration has often said that uh, they would have an open and fair uh, competition, and uh, they would also try to achieve the maximum economic benefit. If that's the priority, it's okay. Still, if you look at government's uh, procurement, you should not just uh, become the um, host uh, for such tendering. You would also be implementing economic policies, given your very special status in procuring services and uh, products, you would also have to achieve a certain objective in order to uh, ensure that social objectives can also be achieved. In s you should not just be looking at uh, the lowest bid. Hong Kong's economy is uh, recovering, and SMEs will also become the uh, driving force for such uh, economic recovery. While they are in difficulty, supporting SMEs should also become a policy objective of the government's uh, procurement policy. That's the requirement on the administration, and uh, it's also your unshakable responsibility. The administration has often adopted this lazy fair policy. You would ensure that there would be sufficient competition in the market. The administration should not interfere too much. But then under government's uh, procurement policy for larger enterprises and overseas enterprises and SMEs, if they are treated uh, um, all the same, then that would not be able to really ensure fairness and, uh, and uh, fair competition. SMEs, in terms of their scale of operation and also cash flow, they cannot uh, compete with larger corporations. On the face of it, uh, you might think that uh, it's fair. They would find it difficult to um, align themselves with larger corporations, and therefore you will have to help them. And the administration also do something about the tendering system in order to help them, or else uh, 
it would be uh, an unfair competition in um, reality. And therefore, to reform this, the administration will have to make sure that in the scoring system, you would not be giving too much uh, weighting to the lowest bit. In some European countries, they would also adopt a different approach. Other than considering the bidding price, they would also consider other factors, including technological innovation, uh, quality of uh, the products, and also social benefit, and also economic uh, and also econ environmental protection value, and so on, before deciding whether or not a contractor should win the uh, contract. Uh, innovation, creativity should be taken on board, so that you can encourage them to be more innovative. That would also help reduce uh, unhealthy competition, so that they would not be putting in cutthroat bids so that uh, their competitiveness can also be enhanced, so that there would be a win-win situation between the government and the SMEs. These are my remarks. I support both Tony Chair's original motion as well as the amendments moved by other members. Thank you. Mr. Rin Kong. Mr. President, about Mr. Mr. Tony Chair's original motion on reforming the tendering system to support local enterprises, I support it. SMEs is the pillar of our economic development in terms of promoting development of the economy, um, saving jobs and uh, improving people's livelihood, SMEs have always been playing a pivotal role. And yet over the years, SMEs are subject to a lot of pressure. Apart from business pressure, they also need to uh, face different problems such as a high cost for um, raw materials and high costs of operation. And especially under the current epidemic, uh, many SMEs are struggling to say, stay afloat. And we have been discussing the tendering and procurement system for many years. And over the years, we have only seen minor improvements. There hasn't been any overhaul. Although in as far as uh, tender evaluation is concerned, we have increased weighting to, on technical score. SMEs, however, are always uh, coming last in any um, tender exercise. Only the large enterprises would win, and therefore it is necessary for the government to provide greater assistance to SMEs. And I have a number of comments on this issue. First set a quota or proportion for SME bidders. On the current tendering system, the government should further categorize different procurement um, systems and that there should be more opportunities for SMEs to take part in the process. Every year, the government uh, would undertake procurement exercises. And if a certain proportion uh, is allocated to uh, SMEs, this would help SMEs, and this would also bring vibrancy to the local uh, businesses and increase competition. Second, we should improve the marking scheme and uh, adjust the weightings to uh, tender uh, to technical and price elements. Many countries adopt policies such that they avoid lowest bid wins. Instead, they adopt the concept of public value, and that is in terms of uh, quality, outcome, and price, they take a comprehensive approach in their tender evaluation because uh, government policy is not the same as ordinary consumer goods. Apart from considering public value, the government should consider the overall social circumstances and the public benefits and the knock-on effect of each um, service or item procured. Although price is something uh, quantifiable, we need to find a balance between public value and price elements. The government should work on that to ensure that um, more quality companies with uh, reasonable low bids can win um, the uh, tenders. Third, there should be a continuous public feedback mechanism so that there is public oversight. Healthy competition would help incentivize uh, tenderers to improve their service quality. So it is necessary to build a platform to allow the public to give feedback uh, to the services provided. The government should more proactively 
develop uh, the channels of communication with the public so that the general public can also make their voice heard. For uh, social, for enterprises facing the public, they should also um, accept the arrangements and receive public feedback. And I think that we should follow the recommendations in the audit commission, and that we want we should make sure there is oversight of um, the tenderers' uh, fulfillment of their responsibility as set out in the tender, and the. The government should improve the tender evaluation mechanism to ensure quality. And we should consider whether there is a problem of uh, the lowest bid wins and then um, the poor service quality uh, is delivered. In a new term of government, I hope that uh, INT can be more widely adopted so that we have a centralized tendering mechanism and that we can draw up a set of um, procurement guidelines that are more in line with uh, the current social value. Next, Mr. Chen Xiu Hong. Thank you, Mr. President. I speak in support of Mr. Tony Chen's motion on reforming the tendering system to support local enterprises and the amendments moved by Mr. Duncan Chiu and Dr. Stephen Wong. The government has made a lot of improvements in the tendering of uh, public works projects. The partnership approach is now t um, adopted in order to enhance um, efficiency and cost effectiveness. It brings in a new culture of uh, project management. The government also allows SMEs to uh, more widely participate in uh, government projects such as splitting large contracts into smaller ones to encourage SMEs participation and avoid the risk of over concentration of contracts and that the, uh, there won't be bundled uh, contracts in the same tender and that uh, for some dedicated um, aspects of the projects they would be there would be a separate tender the cap is also removed for projects of simpler nature so that uh, SMEs can also take part in the tender exercise. I believe these measures help SMEs take part in the government tenders and in the long run, they also facilitate economic development in Hong Kong and I appreciate the improvements. At the moment for works projects, we have the two envelope, two stage uh, approach. Ten, uh, technical and price proposals are evaluated at two different stages using two separate envelopes. And the t tender with the highest score uh, after assessment will win the bid. As for more complex projects, the government will also uh, consider the tenderous uh, submission as well as the tenderous past performance. Mr. Tony Chair's motion refers to the current public works tendering system and that at the moment the lowest bid wins and this will lead to poor service quality and uh, cost overruns and delays and this will undermine the development of SMEs and exacerbate the brain drain in, this, in the industry so that there is um, a manpower gap uh, in the sector. The government should further reduce the weighting given to the lowest bid wins criterion and avoid bundled tenders and introduce elements to support enterprises such as innovation so as to actively support the development of local SMEs. The government, of course, should be prudent in using public money. At the same time, we should make sure there is no cutthroat bidding so that we can uh, resolve problems such as unreasonably low bids, cutthroat bidding, and um, grassroots workers uh, being deprived of their rights. And we should avoid um, stifling SMEs. The government should reform the system to better support the development of SMEs. Mr. President, apart from supporting local enterprises, I think that the government's tendering and procurement system should be updated and there should be timely reviews and improvements. And I, in particular, agree with Mr. Duncan Chiu in his amendment and that uh, there should be increased weighting given to the INT elements of um, local SMEs or increase the score ratio for local INT enterprises. 
At present, over $130 billion have been allocated by the government on innovation technology development. But I don't think the government should just dish out resources. The government should lead by example and adopt more widely INT in different areas of their policies and to implement INT in the public services. For example, uh, the uh, uh, innovative elements rating should be increased in tender exercises to encourage um, companies to more widely adopt uh, INT solutions. As for Dr. Stephen Wong's amendment, he mentions that more environmental protection elements should be introduced, and I fully agree. In fact, ESG, environmental protection, social and governance, governance should be incorporated into different aspects of government policies, and the government should take the lead. Only by striking a balance can we achieve de um, development objectives so that uh, at the same time, while we have economic activities, we can also generate social benefits. This is only for the harmony of our society. I support the motion and the amendments. Mr. Um, Gary Chen. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank Mr. Tony Chair for moving this motion on reforming the tendering system to support local enterprises. Many members already referred to uh, the improvement measures such as splitting large contracts and avoiding the lowest bid wins. And all these are true, but I'd like to give you a simple example. Well, just take this pencil on my desk. These two Pencils are provided by the electrical secretariat in this chamber. So, members, if we take a look at this pencil, it's made of recycled uh, newspaper. And if you take a closer look, for this one, this orange pencil, you see simplified characters on it. So clearly, this. These two uh, so-called recycled pencils are made in the mainland. I'm not saying that um, mainland pencils are not good, but I want to know why we're not using, um, you know, um, pencils that are made in Hong Kong. According to the electrical secretariat, the pencils are sold at $32 per 100. That means 32 cents per pencil. In Hong Kong, if we... Uh, buy a pencil made of recycled materials, at least it would be 50 cents to a dollar. And that explains why the Legislative Council is using pencils procured from the mainland, not procured locally. That is exactly an example of the lowest bit wins. However, from the uh, environmental protection perspective, shouldn't we support the recycling industry in Hong Kong? Do we have the ingredients for making uh, these recycled pencils? Yes. Do we have the machinery? Do we have the uh, venue? Yes. But do we have the support, policy support so that the government will procure locally made pencils? The answer is no. And that is why even in this chamber uh, today, we are using pencils made in the mainland. And that is exactly why Mr. Tony Chia is moving this motion to reform the tendering uh, system. Apart from value for money, more importantly, we need to support local enterprises. Mr. President, I've always been following up on environmental protection policies and in fact, uh, we have only waste collection, but not recycling. Well, we do have recycling activities, but then the end products are not procured. There is no market because of the high prices. So we collect waste plastic, we collect different forms of waste, and then we put them together and just uh, pack them and export them to other countries. And that's uh, this, the end of our recycling chain. In recent years, I've seen changes. For example, the government has been using eco pavers uh, produced locally. However, if, as far as the government's procurement effort is concerned, if it can take the lead 
and procure locally uh, local products, then we'll be able to improve the situation. Of course, the secretary would tell me that uh, we are signatory to the WH, uh, WTO's uh, procurement agreement, and that we need to source globally. And I understand your difficulty, but let's imagine that uh, well, many members here are fond of. Uh, Coffee, and if you buy a cup of coffee, you must have heard of the fair trade coffee, and that um, we're not depriving the other side of their right. So, if we want to support the uh, recycling industry in Hong Kong, and if you could just pay a little bit more, as long as it's still reasonable, I believe member here will support you. So, I uh, support Mr. Tony Chair's motion and the amendments. Mr. Sunny Chan. Good morning, Deputy. I would like to thank Mr. Tony Chair's motion on reforming the tendering system to support local enterprises. Supporting local enterprises, especially the SMNEs, we need to take a multi pronged approach. The government tendering and procurement system, we have to do a major overhaul. I agree with Mr. Chair's. A suggestion, for example, uh, reducing the lowest bit wins criteria, and also to introduce elements to support SME development. It's also focusing more on creativity and innovation. I would like to share my uh, views on government procurement and tendering. Government has focused on IT recently. The CE incoming. John Lee said that no IT, then there will be no future, and aim to develop Hong Kong into an international IT hub to integrate itself onto the 14th February plan. For companies big and small, we have a lot of outstanding uh, technology breakthroughs, and some of them managed to be commercialized. When government procuring goods and services, it lacked an innovation an approach and tend to stick with uh, what they know and not too interested in uh, sourcing products in the market for newer substitutes. Look at other governments and the private sector, tertiary institutes, they tend to more proactive sourcing policy. For example, a lot of governments would directly source uh, R and And pro conduct procurement before the R and D results become commercialized, and it's also to reduce the pressure on our expenditure. And some companies actually contain specifications relate to uh, innovation as part of the tender document. And the procurement agents and the officials should be more proactive to scout and be exposed and negotiate more innovative ID products and services. And during the product development stage, you should uh, start working with the companies and provide support accordingly. This can not only help local companies, and through this collaboration model, their product uh, will be more tailor-made for the government. Mr. Duncan Chu's amendments, that when procuring procure IT products, the tenant document should contain provisions supporting local companies. And for the vetting, they should also increase the score ratio for local IT enterprises under the approval mechanism. There have been many proceedings in other places as well. Check uh, China, for example, according to the Ministry of Finance on year 2020 report, the procurement law consultations mentioned that supporting uh, national industries, the government procurement should procure a, a local uh, engineering and services. And the U.S. Congress have passed the Buy USA Act and asked the government to accord priority on made in USA products. And 2004 amendments and stipulated that the government should buy from uh, local products first. To buy foreign products, their price should be a uh, uh, lower than the lowest prices of goods made locally. You can see the Hong Kong procurement policy had plenty of room for improvement. Besides 
reforming the mechanism, the government must adopt an innovative thinking to deal with procurement matters. I look for it that after reorganizing itself, the government uh, can be more proactive in helping local companies and more appropriate. I still submit to support the original motion and the two amendments. Mr. Lai Chung Kwok. Hong Kong government's tendering system has all along been plagued with problems. And as mentioned in Mrs. Tony Chess original motion, one of the crux of the matter is that the lowest bid wins. And we led to a drop in quality and the poor uh, remuneration of outsourced employees. The government approval or tender evaluation, the technical score usually made about 30 to 40 percent, and the price score made of 60 to 70 percent. Even though the official's position is that that the government has considered uh, factors beyond the price, in reality, according to 2012 government outsourcing survey, about 48 respondent governments over 80% of the contracts were awarded to the lowest bidder. This was a, was a very uh, undeniable fact. The lowest bid wins is the fact about our tendering system. Over time, the result is that we are given poor quality work at lower prices. You get what you paid for. Well, not that the government has been blind to all this. After a sustained review since 2019, the technical score on the tender has been increased to 50 per, to 70 percent. For the price, have been reduced to about 30 to 50 percent. For the new scoring matrix, after running for a few years. Do we see any improvement for the lowest bid win situation? The government outsourcing surveys had been conducted by the predecessor of the efficiency office. At the last survey was done ten years ago. I urged the government to con provide a timely data so that we can look at the after readjustment of the uh, scoring checklist it is it, the problem is, is still the same i agree with the motion that we actively support development of local smes a lot of the departments and public bodies while conducting tendering has been dominated by the major players in the industry there there's no a fair and genuine competition even though the government pointed out that it's trying to split the larger contract into smaller ones to boost the chances of SMEs winning the bids. However, uh, the dominance of the big companies has so signed no signs of improvements. For example, uh, those winning the government contracts has always been the same old bunch of government consult uh, consultancies. The same also occurred for MTR. Our cooperation as well. After uh, the uh, the Shatin Central Link uh, scandal broke out, the government commissioned an inquiry. The the Atkins uh, has a role, had a conflict of interest while wearing two has to say. For example, the Hong Kong extension. We involved a two. In Hong Kong's extension, and Atkins is is also a the consultant for MTRCL, and also advised the MTRCL whether the issues are acceptable. So the design and the advisory is done by the same company, and the two. Project controller is actually the same person for the two projects. So then there should be definitely conflict of interest. The MTRCL example, I don't want to accuse particular companies, but 
looking at the system itself, whether for the government, the public organizations and the bodies, if the tendering system is monopolized by major companies, there will be all kinds of problems. I urge the government to improve the tendering system and should not directly and directly discriminate SMEs to ensure that Hong Kong uh, meet the WTO government procurement agreements and give all bidders a fair chance. Mr. Frankie Yick. The Liberal Party support Mr. Tony Chess's original motion. The Governments tend to adopt the lowest bid wins criteria on uh, service and goods. The large companies have a bigger economy of scale. However, you get what you paid for. The lowest bid wins at the end, there is bound to be uh, delivering substandard work at low price. Cutting corners and using substandard materials and also uh, uh, exploiting outsourced workers are all problems due to the lowest bid wins. In poor times, in order to win the tender, the the companies would enter cutthroat uh, bidding, which led to vicious competition. Well, uh, incomplete work or safety hazard tends to flourish. The government at the end will need to uh, try to remedy the work with more money. Not only we need to claw back public money, on the other hand, we need to arrange retendering to prevent a quality or completion issues. The government has keep boosting supervisory procedures. The lowest bid wins with the intent of uh, saving public money, but at the end it costing us more. A lot of the public works are currently uh, offered in the bundled tenders from only one company responsible for the design and construction. Of course, it's easier to manage. Unless a companies are very sizable, usually the SMEs do not have the enough talent. This will really deprive the SMEs the eligibility to join to put in tenders. The government should split up this contract to give the SMEs a chance. To prevent the lowest bid wins and also offering substandard quality, when evaluating the tenders, you should reduce the price weighting and also Introduce a scoring system by measuring the reputation, technicality, and safety records, etc., before arriving at a final decision. Currently, for service or the construction contracts, usually they adopt the lowest bid wins criterion. Whereas uh, they got to do with income, it, we need to uh, award to the highest bidder. According to the debate, we need to support the local enterprises. What the highest bid wins. The government should also review it as well. Well, for the land auction, for example, for the short term tenancies for oil stations and warehouses and parking lots, tend to be awarded the highest bidder. Uh, this arrangement can boost revenue to the treasury. However, there were uh, disadvantages to the industry development. For the highest bid, they actually be um, awarded to the uh, richest companies. Besides the petrol stations, this size are auctioned every three to five years. And due to the highest bidder, the land costs keep land premium keep pushing up, which push up operation costs. At the end we we'll all have to pay. While the higher bidder will tend to transfer the cost to the consumers. If the government intend to support the industries, they should uh, do away with the highest bidder win principle. Otherwise we'll be undermining our competitiveness. Recently, in the loading area, the uh, selective tendering is one measure to support the industry. Would help the uh, smaller players, but uh, indispensable players in the logistic industry to flourish. Therefore, the Labour Party hope that the government can uh, reform the highest bidder system as well. Well, the lowest bid win and the highest bid win are the two extremes to strike a balance. The tendering system should work with the right scoring mechanism so that we can have an open and fair uh, competition. Not only we can save uh, public money and ensure that the quality uh, will not be compromised while getting maximum return will not obstructing industry development. I so submit. Wong Ying Ho. Dr. Ken Kennedy Wong, Madam Deputy, SMEs, uh, financial 
uh, position and also their capability cannot be compared to those um, of larger corporations. And therefore, when they try to bid for government contracts under the procurement systems, uh, it's very hard. Uh, the chances are really very slim, despite the fact that uh, the HKSARG is also a signatory to the WTO GPA. And therefore, when it comes to tendering, they will have to treat all the bidders uh, on a par to ensure that both local contractors and overseas contractors, uh, whatever their scale of operation, will be able to take part in such a tendering exercises uh, on an equal footing. So, And yet, uh, for SMEs, particularly local enterprises, they will have to face uh, f more fierce uh, competition. Despite the fact that in recent years, the administration has fine-tuned its uh, procurement policy to ensure that SMEs will be able to join um, such a bidding, including the fact that uh, the technical score will be given higher rating when it comes to the scoring system, and um, the lowest bid tech saw will also be given less weighting, and uh, sometimes uh, they would also split up the contracts into smaller contracts, and they would also try to reduce the risk for individual contractors. But then these initiatives are wrongly targeting specific sectors in, instead of uh, helping SMEs to comprehensively join government tendering exercises. I have uh, looked at uh, 2017 to 2019. Only 6.6 .6 procurement contracts have been won by SMEs, and that would account for just 10% uh, of the total value of uh, government contracts uh, for the import and export sector that I represent. Uh, SMEs also find it hard to join government bids. And of course, uh, I'm also a practicing solicitor. I am also the uh, senior partner for a law firm in Hong Kong. And therefore, for SMEs uh, that are facing a lot of uh, difficulties in bidding for government contracts, uh, I share the same sentiments. Looking elsewhere, SMEs uh, have um, been benefited uh, by government policies. For example, in the UK, well, they've also set a target so that by 2022, SMEs uh, procurement of contracts uh, would account for one third of the total contract sum. And in South Korea, they've also legislated to ensure that um, SMEs will be able to sell products accounting for half of those uh, procured by the government. I suggest that the government should also take a look um, at these experiences uh, so that we can also modify our approach and we can also come up with guidelines uh, to support SMEs and that would also effectively guide uh, departments uh, in selecting qualified or eligible SMEs, in particular local uh, SMEs, uh, to become suppliers for the government. We can also introduce this uh, joint bidding system so that um, for SMEs from the same factor, from the same sector, they can also um, merge and um, join in the bids, and that would also increase their chance of winning the contracts. We of course uh, will understand that uh, there would also be a uh, risk in terms of uh, liability and um, contractual problems and so on. But then if the administration can take the lead and improve the system, I'm sure these uh, problems are resolvable. And if SMEs have higher chances of joining government tenders, then government's uh, procurement work would become more flexible and efficient. For example, during the fifth wave of the epidemic, SMEs uh, have taken, active, taken an active part uh, in the procurement of uh, anti-epidemic uh, resources, and the administration has managed to get those uh, resources more effectively to meet the needs of, a, of our society. With these remarks, I support the original motion as well as the amendment. Thank you. Dr. Johnny Ng, Madam Deputy, I speak in support of uh, Tony Chair's original motion as well as the amendments moved by other members. For many years, the Hong Kong government's uh, contracts and services uh, have been outsourced uh, by way of um, tenders, and very often the lowest bids would take the contract. The system is to protect the use of public money, and yet uh, very often the quality of service would also be lowered, and therefore it backfires because uh, it's an abuse of government resources. And very often that's, that would also lead to um, 
negligence of duty and so on. For example, um, in the fifth wave of the epidemic, uh, there have been a lot of tragedies taking place in RCHEs uh, managed by SWD because the SWD has stuck to the original procurement system and as a result they outsourced uh, the management of many of these uh, RCHEs and the quality of service has also been compromised. Uh, and they would also um, allow uh, those uh, on CSSA or those uh, who are financially compromised uh, to go into these uh, sub subsidized uh, elderly homes and uh, as a result they suffer. And uh, Hong Kong's uh, cost has been high and very often for public contracts or public uh, works projects that uh, they would have uh, cost overruns and there would also the, there would also be the uh, multi-layer of uh, subcontracting. That's because um, many of these subcontractors are not very familiar with these uh, works and therefore our government should take reference from other uh, government's experiences. For example, in Singapore, before the tendering, they would also negotiate with the contractors to ensure that contractors would conduct in-depth studies uh, and they would also do their costing more carefully. And as a result, uh, they would also go through very detailed study before they would put in their bids. And um, they would not just be looking at the lowest uh, bids. In recent years, we have also proactively promoted the development of IT. But then I've also heard uh, from those uh, uh, contractors, they said that uh, one of the reasons why Hong Kong's INT has not been able to take off, that's because of the government's uh, procurement system, because they often attach uh, the biggest uh, importance to the lowest uh, bids. Would that still be in line with today's needs in order to promote uh, our um, um, business uh, development, we will have to be more flexible in our tendering system. We should not just uh, be giving the contract to the lowest uh, bidder. We should also encourage um, IT and creativity. We should look at uh, how government bureaus and departments and public bodies are tendering system. We should also lower the weighting given to the uh, lowest uh, price. Uh, we should also attach importance uh, to quality. We should also come up with the lowest uh, reasonable cost uh, for various uh, types of tenders. Um, these are my remarks. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rock Chen, Madam Deputy, government's uh, tendering system has been a subject of criticism for many years because they often give the contracts to the lowest uh, bidder. But then in recent years, in order to encourage uh, innovation, the government has modified its policy. For example, innovation and also technological requirements would also be given certain weighting instead of just uh, giving consideration to the um, price. For example, instead of giving them 30-40 percent, uh, technological score would also be uh, up to 50-60 percent so that uh, for those uh, with a higher technical score, they would stand a higher chance of uh, winning the contracts. The administration would also be looking at uh, the uh, contractors' experience and track records, uh, uh, and uh, the um, weighting can be up to 15 percent, so that uh, SMEs and also startups uh, can also have a fairer chance of winning the contracts. Yes, I've set up some of the um, initiative initiatives introduced by the administration in improving the procurement system. I'd like to emphasize the following two points. First, uh, the prerequisite for the ten for the tendering exercise would be that uh, they would also have to have relevant experience uh, in the past. Uh, they would also have to have a certain manning ratio for particular projects. That would not be uh, beneficial to the uh, SMEs. For example, taking services and, as an example, between 2016 and 17, up to 2018-19, during those uh, three years, uh, only 6.6 .6 of the procurement contracts have been won by the SMEs. Secondly, the tendering uh, system would uh, often result in uh, the lowest bidder takes it. So the government's um, tendering exercises uh, would often adopt the two envelope system so that the technical score and the price score would be added um, up before uh, deciding on the uh, ultimate winner. They would also take out uh, the uh, excessively low price to ensure that uh, uh, only those uh, with uh, appropriate costing would win the contract. Uh, still, they would still attach importance to the cost factor. But then when it comes to procurement of uh, products and so on, there are still some problems. I can give you an example. Well, for contractors, uh, if the technical score uh, is okay, but then one of the companies might come up with a very low cost. That might be a below uh, cost. 
In other words, that company will stand a higher chance in winning the contract. And after uh, getting the contract, uh, there is a possibility that uh, they will just uh, tailor the uh, products uh, to the cost, uh, and that would compromise the quality of the products. Recently, some colleagues have said that a few years ago, well, for late for late uh, for the latent um, contractor, they would also they would all involved uh, in the uh, uh, short uh, uh, in the piling problem in the uh, Hong Hom station. So uh, they would just uh, be giving the contract uh, to those uh, overseas contractors with experience, and as a result, uh, they have also mon monopolized the uh, Hong Kong's railway market. And today's subject is on providing support to local enterprises. I'd just like to ask this question. Well, what's the definition of local enterprises? How do we define them? I can give you an example. For example, for overseas enterprises uh, setting up subsidiaries, and they can also register those uh, subsidiaries as a local company, and they can also employ a large number of local workers. But then, ultimately, the um, shares are still held uh, by this uh, overseas corporation. Then, would this uh, subsidiary, this local subsidiary, be treated as a local enterprise? And therefore, I'm the, of the view that when it comes to local enterprises, uh, they will have to be formed uh, by predominantly uh, local people, and uh, they should be what we mean by local enterprises. Yes, the government has been asked to modify its uh, procurement policy so that uh, more technological scores should be given to these enterprises and cost weighting should be lowered. Without compromising the fairness uh, principle, we should attach uh, more importance uh, to SMEs so that they can take part in Hong Kong's economic development and they can also help build um, local economy. They can also nurture more local talents. Both the DAP and myself support the original motion as well as the other amendments. Uh, these are my remarks. Thank you. Mr. Kenneth Lau. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Deputy. I speak to support Mr. Tony Chia's motion as well as the amendments moved by other members. Madam Deputy, SMEs are the major driver of our economy. In 2021, over 340,000 SMEs were recorded in Hong Kong, accounting for 98% of all enterprises in Hong Kong. It's also the major job provider for our young people. However, there hasn't been a lot of support from the government. After joining the World Trade Organization, the government's procurement agreement is such that we only allow global sourcing and there is equal footing for all participants. There is no favorable treatment for SMEs. Now, of course, a level playing field for all in the market is a good thing, but even other signatories of the World Trade Organization's procurement agreement resort to different means to protect their own SMEs. And right now, Hong Kong government allows local SMEs to compete with uh, foreign major conglomerates, um, and it's not fair. For example, in other countries, there may be a certain percentage uh, allocated to local SMEs, and that in some other projects, the foreign government may uh, stipulate uh, a certain percentage or make it a requirement for local enterprises to take part in the bidding process. The other problem is that uh, for a long time, the government has only attached importance to um, pricing, and that leads to the lowest bid wins, and that uh, vicious cycle is created. When you have low bids, you have poor quality outcome. And very often, because of the uh, low bids winning the project, in the end, there is cost overrun, and the government needs to apply for further funding from us. But on the whole, if you submit a low bid, you have an edge. So in order to improve the situation, we need to reform the tendering system. Like Mr. Tony Chair said, the government should determine the lowest reasonable cost for different tenders so that uh, we can eradicate cutthroat bidding. Now, supporting SME is a major means of boosting the economy around the world. However, for decades, the government has been neglecting our SMEs. As a result, SMEs are not vibrant and uh, the job opportunities are limited. 
In 1996, 60% of jobs in private market came from SMEs. Last year, it was 40%. And that also takes away jobs from young people in Hong Kong. So the government should mend the gap and support SMEs as quickly as possible. In fact, we have suggested to the government that the tendering procurement systems should be reformed. For example, for major projects, we need to impose a certain uh, percentage for the participation of small enterprises. More importantly, the government should revamp their mindset and uh, do something about the so-called equal footing uh, principle, which leads to unequal um, uh, unhealthy competition. The government should adjust policies to see how the best interests of Hong Kong people are served. I hope in the future the government will take our views and make major changes to the current system to give a real boost to the development of SMEs to Hong Kong so that we, um, so that we can uh, provide more quality jobs for young people. I so submit. Mr. Andrew Lam. Thank you, Madam Deputy. First of all, I thank Mr. Tony Chair and I support his motion as well as the um, amendments moved to my members. Now, the original motion. Um, Suggest that we should further cut the rating, a weighting given to the lowest bid wins criterion. I, f I fully agree, and that we should eradicate cutthroat bidding so that not only the large enterprises win, and we all should we should also avoid small enterprises from submitting excessively low bids as a gamble uh, to win big government projects. Now, take my sector as an example. If we adopt the two envelope, two stage approach, we need to be careful about the technical score requirement. If we lay out a lot of details in a technical requirement, and if we have a capital size requirement, this will undermine the participation of SMEs. At the end of the day, SMEs will not get the necessary support and the whole society suffers. So my concern is in the procurement process, how we can uh, make better use of INT to enhance efficiency and effectiveness. For the uh, standard uh, tender document, such as procurement of goods, can we digitize it and standardize it? If we have a tender form that is standardized, then with clarity, we will be able to improve market competition. And this will encourage more SMEs to participate in the uh, competition so that uh, they won't face the big competitors such as large enterprises and be, de be turned away. At the moment, depending on the operational needs of departments, there is no standard tendering approach. The government advocates a smart government. And the government should make make use of the big data and draw up a list of items commonly used by departments for procurement purposes. Information should be released so that works department will be better informed. This will help reduce the time needed to get the information they don't have so that you can extradite the process. Data should be uploaded to a central database so that the relevant uh, tendering units and the uh, prospective bidders can read, can access the database and look up information. Likewise, a standard form can be used for updating information and for record keeping. This will save time in filling in forms again and save time in exchanging data among departments. This will reduce the cost for SMEs and speed up the procurement process. Next, I agree with the members' amendments that the government should more widely adopt INT solutions. For example, in government tenders, 
IT should be adopted so as to expedite the process and rationalize the process so that at the end of the day, we have a win-win for the government, the uh, business sector, and uh, the people. Next, Mr. Ambrose Leung. First of all, I thank Mr. Tony Chair for moving this motion, which is timely. It's, time is right for our discussion here. And let me share this experience with you. A few years back, I joined a steering committee on the sale of first-hand residential property. The purpose of setting up the steering committee was to scrutinize and consider um, the formulation of the bill. And one of the studies involved the relevant legislation in other jurisdictions which we could make reference to. And clearly, the first step to examining um, foreign legislation would be to invite law firms uh, to uh, undertake the study. However, the government awarded this uh, study contract not to a law firm, not to uh, an institute that um, specialized in research. But that's not the point. The organization was able to properly conduct the study. And the when the consultant briefed us on the consultancy report, uh, and afterwards I asked him how the research was done, and then the consultant just frankly told me that they engaged a local law firm to conduct the study. Now, the what is ironic is that the government could have directly approached this solicitor's firm instead of uh, allowing the consultants uh, to make a cut. The government's reply, however, was that uh, no law firm uh, entered any bid. And I don't think this is the real answer. We're now experiencing the second reunification to our motherland, and we're now uh, struggling in uh, amidst the this really challenging environment. More support should be provided to SMEs. It's time we revamped the tendering system and the procurement system, or we should draw up a fresh one. We should set up a new system to nurture local talents and enhance the competitiveness of local enterprises. We should also help rejuvenate the Chinese nation. Well, you may ask why our procurement effort would affect the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. But this is exactly what is happening in reality. Well, the Central People's Government has already required um, departments to use the mainland produced computer equipment when they update their um, computer equipment and software. I believe that this is an important national security consideration. And that we should all contribute to rejuvenating the Chinese nation uh, by doing that and to support SMEs. So, Madam Deputy, in terms of financial services and and raw materials, Imagine if we are sanctioned by other countries and we have a, an exodus of um, talents, especially expatriate talents in Hong Kong. How do we sustain our operation? The answer is we need local talents, we need local enterprises to keep our economy afloat. The government is such a major party a privy to contracts and if the government does not help local enterprises will affect one country two system will also affect the long-term prosperity of Hong Kong as dr. Priscilla Leung, I speak to support mr. Tony chairs original motion amendment by the two other members for the next four minutes uh, we'd like to talk about the procurement I must declare that I, I spent, I'm the chairman of the uh, Green Organization. And the Green Procurement Charter uh, was launched when I was a chair lady. This charter in 2018 uh, became the Sustainable Procurement Charter. In, back in 2007, 
D, uh, HA and the AA are the founding members of the charter. However, they did not sign on to the Sustainable Procurement Charter. It seems that some of the public bodies are behind the international standards. And recently for the uh, incoming CE, well, uh, when he was barred from a certain social media, I made inquiries that when using different software, what are the policies in place? Well, uh, the report was given since that uh, the Hong Kong has signed on to the WTO government procurement agreement and therefore, uh, we could not have any policy to encourage and protect our uh, local industries. So that's a disincentive for our local IT industry. And in terms of safety, especially for government uh, softwares, we are fairly relying on others. Well, back in 2017, about 3.7 million voters' particular data are lost. Are they actually related? Therefore, we should uh, hedge our bets. I'm also the WTO Study Center founder. Well, I would like to talk about a few countries, including the US, France, and UK, and Germany, uh, all WTO members. They have policies in place to favor, uh, to procure uh, from their local SMEs and their uh, native R&D technology. If you don't offer them incentive and you won't help them grow, they will never prosper. When we talk about legal aid, if some lawyers cannot get any legal aid department cases, they could never get experience. And during the transition, we should take a parallel approach, which I hope the government will adopt. On one hand, I've been discussed with a lot of members. Currently, they have this habit and inertia. Well, uh, to learn a, a new software from scratch, probably a lot of people won't bother with all the fuss. However, when we teach at the college, we keep learning new systems. The world is changing, especially Hong Kong and our nation in face of the geopolitics that we, we need to carry on regardless. Well, in the past, the West is unwilling to import uh, export technology to China. We have to do, learn ourselves. Now that it could be quite some time before we run out of options for the new projects and the departments, that we must have a, a backup plan in using a technologies that we can control. And this is about the public interest as well, especially the big data and the data usage. Well, for the other banking system, we should start getting used to uh, using uh, mainland software that's very advanced. That our uh, tech talent, we need to start adapt to it. And through procurement policy, we can uh, foster the uh, IT system. We have to be self-reliant. to uh, grow our own IT ecosystem, I so submit. Ms. Judy Chan. Thank you, Deputy. I speak to support Mr. Tony Chair's original motion on reforming the tendering system to support local enterprises and the amendments by two other members. Madam Deputy, the outsourcing culture has been much criticized by others. Every time the money has been granted, the government a lack of supervision which affect the service delivery. And, and when things deteriorate, the whole society is forced to accept substandard quality. 
and we、uh, all came across it in our daily lives. Madam Deputy, the government procurement principles seems that it should be、uh, publicly accountable. For every scandal, they come up other ways to deflect responsibility and lack、uh, commitment. How we hold that publicly accountable? The tendering system, even though the secretary pointed out that there are different scoring matrix, the wealth,、uh, the uh, uh, innovation and、uh, green elements, and also need to achieve best value for money. And best value for money and the、uh, lowest bid wins could be just、uh, one line apart. In most cases, it is the lowest bid wins. The winning bid. Uh, usually, ex- get the money, and yet the workers are need to work extra hard, and yet their pay stays flat. If government take the lead to outsource, you are exploiting a lot of the front line workers. If this continues, how can we expect quality service, and how can we retain talent and progresses, Madam Deputy? On one hand, they claim to be a give fair treatment to all the bidders and insisting on open and fair competition. Yet this scoring、uh, system, while、well, you should prize、uh, past experience and overseas experience, and if you lack the prerequisite of international exposure, how can the local companies be given the chance? And grow. Thus, the government should look into、um, providing a more room for more eligible bidders. We do have a lot of potential local companies to、uh, to f-、uh, make a bid, or you can split up the contracts with more opportunities for them to、uh, put in the tenders, put in their bid, not only providing them. Some room for development, and also able to work with other companies, which will foster sound competition, and we will able to、uh, germinate new thinking. Madam Deputy, if we don't reform the relevant system, this outsourcing culture will continue to get in the way of our development. While exploiting the workers, will、uh, also cast a, a, a responsible image of the government. This also won't help local companies and our own talent development, and also undermine our competitiveness. Therefore,、uh, uh, we should also support Ms. Hony Chia's original motion. I so submit, Mr. Xu Kafei. Thank you, Deputy. Today we are debating the reforming the tendering system to support local enterprises. I declare interest. I uh, uh, do um, trading in construction materials. Well,、uh, Mr. Tony just hoped to reform the tendering system to lo- support local enterprises and、uh, startups,、yeah. as well as to、uh, re. Reform the lower bid wins criterion, so that not the lowest bid necessarily wins all the time, and also would allow the SMEs to win more government contracts. We support with the general principles, and for the amendments, and hopefully there will be、uh, more support for the IT procurement and also taking care of the、uh, ESG and COP responsibility, which I support as well. While supporting local enterprises, let's say when evaluating the bids, if your favorite local companies, well, Hong Kong as a WTO member, where well,、uh, whether will will be accused of discrimination by other countries, the government will need to walk a very fine line as we are a global city, and for a lot of products, they tend to be. Uh, imported from Hong Kong for the past two decades,、uh, there are a lot of quality products from the mainland. On the other hand, our local products are scarce and few between. 
well, we all have to protect and foster local companies. A lot of the countries have some policy in place. And for the local Hong Kong products, there are different ways to help them. This should be a good thing. However, in if our uh, tendering system favor local companies, well, uh, being unfair to other countries, we need to be mindful of this. The lowest bid wins has been a long-standing practice. I usually don't see as much of a problem. Let's say if they all three products carry the same specifications and from the same country origin, why don't I choose the cheapest one instead of the expensive one? Well, it's usually okay in most cases for the major government contracts. Besides the price factor, the like innovation and creativity and company reputations should be one of the consideration uh, factor. That's what Mr. Chair uh, said that uh, you should reduce the weighting given to lowest bid criterion. If you want to abolish it altogether, that I would disagree. And as for how how much it should be reduced, the government should do this own homework. Mr. Chase also mentioned about the determine the lowest reasonable cost. For what kind of product? What should be the standard and and to what country or the EU or the UK or uh, the PRC? For the public works there is a guidebook for the uh, construction materials and you usually uh, provide reference well in the, at the end that it become a database and all the information is removed and the government knows why now you have a reference database for different companies i believe this is good for them if you only uh, limit to certain brands and must uh, mandate the con the bidders to use them. There's a, a huge conflict of interest. For certain products, may be the best. However, uh, with technology, that the other products may become uh, better and cheaper. For the uh, building and service list, must be updated all the time. When determining the lowest reasonable cost. I think it's quite challenging. How do you establish uh, uh, the yardstick? Let's say Mr. Duncan Chu said for the IT when new technology, it might be identical for if it is a results oriented. At the end, it will be half or seventy percent cheaper. Well, we all should be results oriented. We just want to protect a local interest, even though uh, the export, the imports may be better. I suppose this is not expected by the public. Uh, therefore, we need to uh, bounce into the international situation. Thank you, Mr. Chen Hang Chen. Thank you, Madam Deputy. I'm grateful to Mr. Tony Chair for moving this motion, enabling us to review the um, existing tendering system in Hong Kong. Mr. Tony Chair and other members uh, have spoken and I share their sentiments, including the excessively low bids and also the excessively low pay or low wage um, cleansing workers. Uh, these are very common in Hong Kong. We hope that uh, the SL government can do something about the procurement system so that more weighting can be given to local enterprises because uh, everybody is working for his own interests. I think uh, that's uh, uh, indisputable. And therefore, if um, the government doesn't work um, in the interests of local enterprises, then what is, what it is, what's, what is it there for? So uh, we don't just um, have uh, talents. We also have local enterprises. And um, our strength comes from whether we have um, government policy supporting local enterprises so that they can um, unleash their potential. And yet we haven't seen that happening under government's uh, procurement system. We haven't really given too much support to local enterprises. I'm referring to the construction sector. Well, since the miss uh, about uh, latents uh, has been broken, well, for public works um, projects uh, being tendered out, uh, very often uh, some of these uh, project companies uh, 
have told me that uh, the current system is not beneficial to local enterprises when it comes to um, track record experience and also their technical score. I can give you an example. Assuming that the administration is building two bridges at two times um, frame and um, two local enterprises, well, one contractor might have experience uh, in building a bridge, but then uh, when it comes to the scoring system, uh, it may not be able to win at all, and therefore it would just uh, work together with an overseas uh, contractor with uh, a very good track record. So they can work together and then they can win the contract. And then in the end, uh, the overseas contractor doesn't have to do anything. They can just uh, share the uh, benefit. Uh, so uh, the local enterprises will just um, uh, carry out uh, all the works. So they have accumulated uh, the experience of building a bridge and they've undertaken everything throughout the project. And yet, uh, what's the score that they're going to get? Uh, it would be very, very low because uh, they have to work with an overseas contractor before they can win the contract and therefore all the score would go to the overseas contractor. And therefore, if they try to bid, the, uh, bid for the contract on their own, they would not be able to get a very high score. And then comes another bridge. The local enterprise has already accumulated experience in building the bridge. Will they be able to then win the next uh, contract? No, because their score will still be very low. And therefore, local enterprises will once again have to partner with an overseas contractor before they'd be able to win the contract. And therefore, they find it very frustrating because over a time, they will have to work with multinationals before they can win any uh, government contracts. So is there a chance for local um, engineering companies uh, to fully unleash their potential so that they can win the contracts themselves and then they can accumulate the experience and then they can just, uh, they cannot just, uh, they will not just be taking on local projects, they can also go overseas to get overseas contracts. So it's opportune for the government to review its existing scoring system and also the uh, tendering system to see if there is room for improvement so that local engineering firms will be able to get a higher score and their genuine experience can also be counted. So that uh, that would uh, mean that whatever they pay for will get the uh, corresponding return. We are not just uh, asking the administration to be inclined in favour of our local enterprises. It's just about uh, the policy, which has to be fair to everyone. We haven't yet um, been able to do so. And therefore, we hope that the administration can look into this. And therefore, in its uh, response later today, uh, they can also uh, address this point. Thank you. Dr. Wendy Hong. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Madam Deputy, I fully support uh, Mr. Tony Chair's original motion as well as the amendments moved by uh, Mr. Duncan Chiu and uh, Dr. Wong Yun Shan. Um, the speeches given by uh, members have been very remarkable, including Gary Chen and so on. I, I'm grateful to them for pointing out uh, the flaws uh, under the current system. I think the administration needs to reflect on them. All along, we have been um, ranked one of the um, most uh, competitive economies and uh, the administration has been treating everybody on an equal footing when it comes to tendering and so on. They would not be given any preferential treatment. Well, under the uh, WTO's uh, GPA, the administration has to be open and fair and uh, it has to be competitive. And yet, uh, if we just uh, give up on our support uh, for local enterprises, I think um, the um, uh, it would not be uh, productive. Well, um, some of the um, multinationals uh, are from, most of these are, are from overseas. Uh, very few of them are from uh, Hong Kong. And therefore, they have, local enterprises have found it difficult to join the tendering system of the government. But most of the SMEs uh, have paid for that. In fact, uh, Almost all the um, member states of the WTO 
would use a government procurement system as a very important tool to support local enterprises, in particular when it comes to environmental protection, technology, culture, and so on. Different countries would also make extensive use of the government procuring system in supporting local enterprises. As Mr. Tony Chair suggested, uh, well, for SMEs in a free market, uh, should be able to compete uh, freely with under other enterprises uh, if we just uh, give them the same score as others, uh, it's not fair. I think uh, the government should take up some responsibilities in coordinating this. We should not just uh, adopt a very straight jacket approach when it comes to a free economy. We should make use of the free market. We should encourage the local enterprises so that they can get more business opportunities. We should improve the business environment for them in order to improve our competitiveness in the long run. I also share the views of many members. We will have to set up a new um, tendering assessment mechanism. We would also have to take into account our labor rights. Well, for the cleansing workers working at the front line, they've been working very hard and they've, make it, they've been making a lot of sacrifices. I fully respect their um, dedication and professionalism, and yet they are not getting, they are not well paid, and I find it uh, heartbreaking. They have not been able to share the fruits of success for our economy. So uh, the rich is getting richer and the poor is getting poorer. So we are exploiting the uh, grassroots, and that's one of the reasons why we have seen this in our community. Mm. I think uh, the government procurement system represents the values of the entire society, and it lacks uh, any commitment towards the workers. And therefore, we should attach more importance to occupational safety and labor rights, and uh, those should be weighed and uh, given a score in order to protect our workers' uh, rights so that they would be able to enjoy the fruits of success uh, of our economy. And also, I've also heard um, a very innovative uh, suggestion recently, and you can also consider that. In other words, uh, instead of giving the contract to the lowest uh, bidder, we should give it uh, to the second lowest uh, bid, so that uh, they would not just uh, be suppressing the price uh, artificially because uh, they are not actually artificially escalating the, or hiking the price. So the bidder will try not just uh, to suppress the price, but then they will also make sure that uh, it will not be too low. And you would also have to look at other factors, including the policy to support local enterprises, um, innovation, labor rights, uh, environmental protection, and so on. I'm sure that would also help improve uh, the environment and also the ecology for local enterprises. Uh, these are my remarks. Thank you. Ms. Maggie Chen. Thank you, Mr. Uh, President. I support Mr. Tony Chair's original motion as well as the amendments uh, by other members. Uh, Hong Kong should have the can fight or can do spirit under the Lion Rock, and therefore enterprises uh, have been able to find space for development. The administration has adopted uh, this uh, positive non-intervention policy, thinking that uh, enterprises uh, should be allowed uh, to fight for themselves. Uh, and yet, given the current situation, this is also an international environment. And therefore, for local SMEs and uh, startups, uh, if they are still treated um, in this lazy fair manner, then they will not be able to grow and prosper. And therefore, the administration is not just the regulator, it should also be the facilitator and promoter. And it should also be the biggest uh, user. And therefore, reforming the tendering system so that uh, we will give priority to local products and services so that uh, local enterprises uh, will have more resources so that they can attract more talents. I think that's uh, of utmost importance. Indeed, uh, Hong Kong has uh, good conditions for developing IT and talents. Indeed, uh, in the early days of the epidemic, uh, the Science Park, together with uh, many research uh, centers, they've also developed uh, uh, facial masks uh, for Hong Kong. And uh, after distributing that uh, for free to all Hong Kong people, well, uh, in fact, uh, this um, surgical this mask uh, has also uh, won uh, a prize. Uh, in Geneva. And therefore, if the administration is willing to put in more resources, then local enterprises will be able to develop products that can be extensively used in Hong Kong, and they can even win international prizes. Another example is what we all know, that is uh, the drones, that is uh, the Dajiang drones, or the uh, 
D D J I drones uh, because uh, in the GBA and also on the mainland uh, we are talking about a massive market. There is a lot of space for development and also for the uh, angel investment because of this uh, um, knowledge. Uh, there are also ample opportunities because we have uh, top notch uh, uh, tertiary institutions and. Uh, in terms of the number of researchers, we are actually at the forefront uh, of uh, this sector. So we are a very important hub in research and development. So when we, when we talk about in the industrialization of IT, Hong Kong has been lagging behind and we are doing a catching up game. And therefore, what we need to do is to put more into practices. We have to reform our tendering system so that it can be integrated um, into our policy to support local enterprises and SMEs. We should also attach importance uh, to local products and services because if we are the big user, then if we are able to try them out, then we'll be able to give them more opportunities to implement or use their products. We can also give people the impression that we do attach importance to local brands. We also need not uh, just exaggerate uh, the importance of these uh, brands and so on. We are not calling them uh, mega projects. Uh, or once in a century products. In fact, even for uh, small products uh, that are used uh, in our daily lives, uh, they can also uh, um, be um, very good products. For example, some of the software or hardware for um, uh, Giron, uh, uh, for the elderly, well, uh, overseas products might not be uh, suitable for the uh, local environment, and therefore we should also assist uh, local enterprises in developing these uh, products so that they can also be used uh, in our CHEs. We have to make use of big data and also uh, mobile apps. We can also use uh, sticks uh, or develop sticks uh, that would be uh, suitable for local elders. So we will have to give them more support. In terms of research funding, we could, can also help them promote uh, these products amongst uh, the local users. So it's about whether or not the administration is uh, willing to put in resources to help them. Well, even if we take a step back, even if the administration cannot be the uh, biggest uh, user, we should also not become the uh, barrier for this. For example, taking Chinese medicine as, as an example, the uh, current proprietary medicine system has been very um, backward huh? that is under the uh, Department of Health. It has never been this promoter or facilitator. We should form or establish a platform so that we can be more proactive to assist uh, the local SMEs to develop our Chinese medicine so that the micro SMEs can also go up uh, the ladder. Thank you. Dr. Zhao Men Kuang. Mr. President, as we all know, the government attaches importance uh, to this uh, tendering system and procurement system uh, comprising the tender uh, the technical price uh, technical score and the price score however if we receive low bids it undermines quality of uh, the goods and services procured what is strange is that according to some complaints i receive some bits are submitted uh, late and we can't help but wonder the, the sincerity of the bidders. Many members spoke on SME's working environment. Apart from SME's constituting 98% of all enterprises in Hong Kong, they also provide job opportunities for 1.28 million in our population. So they are very much related to Hong Kong's economy and the job market. However, under most circumstances, the government just abides by the lowest bidder win criterion. As a result, most of the time, only large enterprises, especially foreign large enterprises, win the bid. And according to some, the problem is particularly serious in the construction industry. According to foreign studies, this value for money procurement approach allows large enterprises to have advantages for a long time and at the same time it deters the participation of small to medium enterprises this will hamper the development of a northern metropolis
the mega project will bring a lot of job opportunities and opportunities for SMEs. So I think the government should reform the system and to help SMEs in uh, as uh, survive as long as uh, support the recovery of the economy. And that is why I support Mr. Chair's motion and the amendments moved by Mr. Duncan Chiu and Dr. Stephen Wong. According to OECD report, comparing to larger enterprises, SMEs usually are um, do not enjoy an upper hand in the composition. And there are also a lot of uh, constraints in terms of resources and manpower and they often cannot meet the administrative and practical requirements in the government's tendering and procurement system. So they seldom win government contracts. To further encourage SMEs to take part in tendering system, uh, in tendering exercises, other governments around the world have uh, progressively introduced measures to encourage SMEs' participation. And these countries include the US, Japan, and Europe, in terms of enacting legislation all the way to implementing the policies, a favorable uh, environment can be created for SMEs, including the establishment on, of a framework allocating a certain proportion to SMEs in government procurement uh, efforts, and that for larger enterprises, they should also uh, allocate uh, some a percentage to SMEs. For example, in the United States, they have a scheme allowing or mandating SMEs to take part in the bidding process. And the percentage has increased from 20 to 35 percent. In other words, in each financial year, not less than 23 percent of all the major contracts awarded should be given to SMEs in order to promote economic, uh, you know, to promote their development. There are also other Western countries providing specialized technical support and training for interested SMEs, including project management, financial management, knowledge on the bidding process, in order to enhance their overall chance of winning government bids. What is worth noting is that many governments around the world are now um, introducing special measures in their tender exercises for the IT systems or computer infrastructure of the governments. Uh, in, a, in, uh, in other words, they restrict the uh, bidding from uh, outside, uh, you know, foreign companies on the grounds of national security. So if the motion is passed, I think that the government should roll out the first procurement exercise and conduct a um, study on the international practices, as I mentioned. This is Mr. Kwok. I speak in support of Mr. Jair's original motion and the amendments moved by the two other members. The government uh, is the single procurement, largest single procurement service providers. The public money involved um, in 2021 was $180 billion or 4% of our GDP. So through tendering exercises, the government should uh, meanwhile meet certain government objectives. But the government has long been criticized for placing too much emphasis on the lowest bid wins criterion, thereby neglecting other uh, the consideration of other values such as social benefits and ESG. And as a result, we see the problem of cutthroat bidding, and the system also uh, undermines the chance of SMEs winning government contracts. For example, in midst the um, pandemic, people are more concerned about environmental hygiene and the rodent infestation problem is really serious. I'd like to use this as an example to highlight the importance of a good tendering system. As I mentioned, in the tendering system, we should include elements such as environmental protection, social benefits, the, and there should be a, importance attached to the past performance of service contractors so that we don't just look at the price element but the service quality. In 2019, the FEHD awarded uh, some contracts. Uh, to, uh, the average price was 197 million, and 
default notices will be issued by the FEHD for malperformance of uh, service contractors. And that uh, 1,157 cases involved default notices and deduction of the contract sum totaling 2.75 million. So um, doing the math uh, per contract, we're talking about deduction of $80,000. Imagine a contract may cost uh, several ten or a million or a hundred million dollars. So eighty thousand dollars deduction only amounts to a minimal de deterrence. As a result, the um, FEHC service contractors perform uh, quite poorly, uh, especially for some, and yet they continue to get government contracts. In theory, the more default notices one contractor gets. A lower score should be given as the tenderest past performance. But according to the Ombudsman in, 20, in April 2019 to March 2020, in relation to 14 street cleansing contracts awarded by the FEHD, using 7.5 as the full score, the service contractors uh, only got to 0 to 3. And for two uh, tenderers, they got to two, uh, 1.5, and the six contracts they, uh, for six other tenderers, they got zero mark, and yet they were able to uh, get the contracts again. In other words, the score um, had no impact on whether they win the contract at the end of the day or not. In other words, uh, there is no importance attached to the past performance of um, these contractors. So apart from um, cost effectiveness, the government should also consider service quality to avoid cutthroat bidding, and that service quality will be undermined afterwards. And we should therefore strike a balance and allow more SMEs to win government bids so as to improve service quality and to create a win-win for service contractors, the public, and the government. Another example is the procurement of face masks. In 2020, the fast subsidy scheme uh, was introduced to subsidize SMEs in um, producing masks to address a shortage. In the beginning of 2021, um, the government imposed a very different requirement in terms of the size of face masks. Um, to be procured very different from the, uh, the uh, dimensions uh, set up before. So the industry uh, was of the view that they were left uh, to uh, try up. They couldn't adapt to the new dimensions. So the government should have a better idea of the market situation in the procurement effort so that um, more suitable standards should be set in the tender in order to help local SMEs. I so submit I support the original motion and the amendments. Ms. Chen Yuming. Mr. President, I support Mr. Tony Chair's motion on reforming the tendering system to support local enterprises and the amendments moved by Mr. Duncan Chiu and Dr. Stephen Wong. If the motion is passed, the Council will be urging the government to reform the tendering procurement systems and promote development of SMEs. The government's procurement system has always been criticized for um, giving too much weight to the lowest bid wins criterion and that service quality comes at a great uh, um, variety. Even with poor service quality, some service contractors are able to win the bids again. And I'd like to give this example in relation to the NENT landfill service contractors uh, problem. Uh, the landfill is close to Liantang Hangun Wai BCP, and the contractor Far East had been providing service since 1995. And uh, the service quality is such that uh, over the years we have had a lot of complaints, be it the residents in um, Takuleng or near Shenzhen boundary. They have been um, the subject of nuisance as a result of uh, odor problem and uh, environmental hygiene. For the other landfill in the new territories, uh, south east, the landfill has now been uh, converted to other uses, and as a result, NENT um, have much more on the plate. And uh, in 2021, against this backdrop, there was an expansion project and the tendering exercise was initiated. I wrote to the Environmental Protection Department. I urged the government to expedite the construction of an incinerator and that the landfill expansion in NDNT should be um, 
should be called uh, to a halt. The interests of NENT should not be neglected. And yet, the expansion projects tendering went on. And I also requested the government to consider the um, expansion project's impact on the development of northern metropolis in the area. At the moment, uh, assessment will have to be made on the past performance of the contractor. In the middle of 2019 and in the end of 2019, I wrote to the administration asking for uh, disclosure of the, uh, ten the terms of the tender and the progress. I did not receive an answer. In April this year, I um, submitted a written question in the special FC sessions again. And according to the administration, the expansion project contract was awarded in January this year. But the administration did not disclose which contractor won the bid. Uh, nor did it disclose any uh, terms of the contract. I am very anxious about this NENT landfill expansion project because this directly affects the development of uh, northern metropolis in the future. And as mentioned for phase one of NENT landfill, the first service contractor performs so poorly and there is no c transparency on the terms of the contract. What is peculiar is that the winning bidder of the expansion project might be a conglomerate formed by the existing service contractor Far East and uh, other participants. And the project involves uh, $7.5 billion and is awarded in such a slapdash manner. I think that at least we should reform the tendering system. We should enhance transparency for major facility, uh, major infrastructure facilities. The, there should be extensive consultation and that in terms of tender evaluation, we should have regard to the overall policy objective and social benefits. We are now entering a new era of ensuring stability after restore, uh, restoring order from chaos. And we should have in mind that this is against the overall development objective of Hong Kong. Mrs. Regina Yip. Thank you, President. I speak to support Mr. Attorney Chair's original motion and amendments proposed by Mr. Duncan Chu and Dr. Stephen Wong. This motion is about government tendering and procurement. There are two parts of this. First, goods, let's say a mask or personal protective equipment, and two, services. I suppose the government's uh, reply will uh, touch on the procurement arrangements is bound by the WTO agreement on government procurement. While the Hong Kong signed it on its own volition, Hong Kong some members uh well some members about uh, uh USA had their Buy American Act well, because the USA did not sign on this agreement, when we procure services, we are also restricted by the trade and service agreement. We understand all these constraints. Well, for the government procurement of goods and services, they tend to favor uh, the lowest bid wins which led to the provider to file to uh, make cutthroat bids. Besides the lowest bid, the government is used to awarding tenders to big companies. It's not about a procedure or uh, legal requirements. It's a matter of culture. Let's say for a new computer system, the civil servants being risk averse, of course, they to pretend to big companies, if you appoint a starter companies without track record, if anything happens, then the civil servants will be held accountable. A lot of the departments, let's say they need to uh, uh, create a new computer system to tend to favor the big contractors. For the government managements, when they retire, they actually work for these contractor companies. And we have the same problem with uh, public works and engineering. As Mr. Lai Chung Kwok pointed out, when, uh, 
when uh, approving uh, impact assessment contracts, let's say for the uh, Sa Chin Central Link and the Chongqing Extension, there seems to be conflict of interest. I also suspect there the issue of monopolizing, monopoly. When what well, for the funding request for the pop. The works department, I can't help but ask the question with the Lan Chao tomorrow phase one feasibility study. The government asked for five hundred and fifty million. Why is this particular figure? How do you arrive at this? I believe that the public works department may have been in touch with their familiar like from like the consultancies like Atkins or OV Arab. And another one, an A Eco, who uh, bid for a lot of MTR projects. Let the the public works department have actually come to agreement with the familiar contractors and treat it like like an ATM. There is a potential conflict of interest, and also an issue of uh, oligopolies. Always the same bunch of companies winning the bids. In my written report replied to my question on 27 April and the past couple years the Atkins have been awarded 25 contracts at a, um, at the grant of 316 million for over error 150 contracts and um, given about 1 billion dollars the government should co play close attention is it a case of oligopoly and only the bigger players wins the smaller companies and the non local the local firms cannot participate it's not about the legal procedure or government regulations. It's just about civil servants' culture being too risk averse. The government should seriously consider it. Mr. Lee Chen Kung. Thank you, President. I am the member of the Hong Kong Institute of Architects. I would like to thank Mr. Tony Chair for moving this motion. The engineering sector has similar different ecology than others industries we do not rely on face-to-face -face contact they need to uh, bid for a lot of contracts however we do no guarantee that they will be awarded the tender therefore they need to force to face a lot of uncertainty there are either a feast or famine while in boom times or when there are a lot of government projects well they simply could not handle all the work when times are bad, when during the blackout riots and led to the uh, backlog of public funding applications and also the major infrastructure about to be completed and there are no new projects in the pipeline, a lot of the engineering companies will be on the lifeline. Well, during the famine period, when there's hardly any projects at hand, the engineering firms will still need to meet their expenses to maintain their daily operations. Besides uh, making, repaying back loans, they need to pay for manpower, leases, equipment, maintenance. As their main income rely on successful bidding. Therefore, they decided to uh, bid first. And uh, anyway, which led to the uh, cutthroat bidding in order to win those contracts. Some companies are using unreasonable bids in order to make ends meet so as they can pay their rent and also uh, keep the jobs of their employees. Is that really a healthy phenomenon in the industry? For the tender documents, there are four elements. First, the manpower, machinery, materials, and profit margin. Currently, a lot of engineering firms would file a very low bid, but found that they couldn't do a, ba a balanced math, and then they decided to cut corners after winning the bid. How for materials, they need to meet specifications. Besides, if only if they decided to cut corners, otherwise they could only cut manpower costs and delivering substandard work. Let's say an um, you need two or three professional engineers to, to lead uh, younger engineers to cut costs. At the end, you have one senior a professional engineers to lead a one or two junior engineers to deal with a project. 
Thus, the project could not put more money to hiring fresh graduate engineers. Therefore, uh, there will be less resource in nurturing the next generation. For the long-term development of the engineer sector, it is not desirable. The currently, the public works procurement policy, with some of them still adopt the lowest bid win criterion, mostly on the scoring or a standard marking scheme to choose the best contractor. I agree that the marking scheme should be overhauled, especially for the standard marking scheme, which will reduce the weight on the lowest on the price and also more weighting on the track record and also adopt the lowest reasonable push and based on the government and payroll costs as estimates so as to reduce incentive to file in cutthroat bidding. And nowadays the development bureau has adopted criteria on tendering and choosing consultancies. I hope that the Hong Kong government can expand the applicability. President, the engineering is also facing a vein drain and lack of succession. Therefore, did you train engineers will be the, the way out? I hope the government for future tender exercises can consider track record, including the actual manpower deployed to meeting compliance specifications and also at the additional criteria of training future engineers. If companies can demonstrate and deploy technology and higher engineers will be given an extra score, they will attract new blood to the sector. I so submit. Dr. Junius Ho. The lowest bid wins has been our culture is not unique to Hong Kong and is applied universally. Not is it right for us to ask for reform? How should we go about it? My colleagues have offered a lot of suggestions. The government should take a bigger role to negotiate for prices, which is echoed by two members. The government has a lot of data. Why can't you negotiate for the better deal? Before you um, initiate a project, before upgrading it from category C to B, finally to A, at different stage, you can discuss with LegCo to justify the project cost. And, and then you have consultancies to at helping you for construction and the consultancies, you have all the data. If you give us an, uh, uh, the total, let's say you need to put it for tendering, uh, you know that when, well, what was an unreasonable low bid or unprofitable bid, all along you have all the data and every step of the way. Therefore, you will come up with a reasonable estimate. For the tendering process, you need to have a buddy system. Now that we talk about how do we actively support the SMEs, well, the SME, in terms of engineering, can cannot really compete with those in the category C uh, 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 contractors. Uh, I'll always be a subcontract or sub subcontractors. How could I be eligible? Therefore, uh, Uh, the uh, for band three can all for band for the C list could also help the contract to the at the at least. and doing the person can transfer the skill and knowledge and nurture this uh, uh, smaller firms. Currently, no such measure exists. And thirdly, you need to have a allo allocation system for the legal aid department. We have thousands of lawyers on the legal aid panel. What everyone has licensed and indemnity insurance. I just for this case, it should be allocated to A, B, C, D, E, and just along the order. If you know that uh, who are eligible for what, 
in the category A, B, C, when a new project comes up, well, you can just apportion the project. And you actually need to do away with tendering altogether. First, we need to negotiate for a better price, and two, you usually have a grading system, and second, on uh, for the budget system and the uh, allocation system, and finally, on expediting uh, and, uh, uh, the construction of a unit team. A single market is about a lot of jungle, which are, which is a different direction from the motion of this debate. Well, that's how the world works. Even though we have the WTO and fairness and transparency and so on, how at the, how at the end, is our own interest account, and yet we need to put on the veneer of fairness and equality, so they will not be criticized. Now that we this. Opinion paper has been issued. We talk about uh, Darwinism and fair competition. If our country decided to go on this path, if we not were not prepared to help our SMEs, at the end our our SMEs will perish even quicker. President, I so submit. Does any other member wish to speak? Mr. Tony Chair, you may now speak on the amendments. Thank you, President. President, first of all, I'd like to thank 35 members who have spoken on my motion. And they've mentioned a lot of uh, good views. And uh, Duncan Chiu and uh, Dr. Wong Yun Shan also moved amendments on my original motion. The following two. At the following, sir, uh, are my views uh, on the two amendments, sir? Uh, in Dr. Ch in Mr. Duncan Chu's uh, amendment, they said that the existing tender system has not brought opportunities uh, for um, genuine fair competition to SMEs, and therefore there should be more support measures uh, to local enterprises. Uh, well, I would fully support this because in the past, uh, the administration has often used uh, the WTA, WTO GPA as an excuse, and they refused uh, to give any priority to local enterprises in their tendering system. But then, according to my understanding, many um, member states uh, of the WTO, including European and American uh, countries, have uh, included such clauses in their contracts. I'm not asking the uh, Hong Kong government to implement uh, protective measures for local enterprises. We are not giving preferential treatment to local enterprises. We are just uh, saying that uh, we should give support to local enterprises so that they can develop in a more professional manner, in particular for startups and local and, and local SMEs, so that they'll be able to grow steady uh, under a fair competition environment so that they will be able to make a bigger contribution to our local economy. In fact, that could come in different forms. We are not excluding overseas companies. Indeed, many multinationals have managed to do so. Well, Mr. Tony Chair, you're supposed to comment on the two amendments, so please do speak to the point. Yes, I'm talking about uh, giving priority to local enterprises because that's what is uh, uh, because that's uh, what the amendment is about, and therefore we should give priority to local enterprises. Uh, we should support them. When it comes to supporting local SMEs, well, large government projects uh, and also consultancy studies, uh, we should also provide that uh, well for the uh, winning bidder. They should support. Um, the uh, smaller enterprises, and there should also be technological or technology transfer so that SMEs can also be made responsible for part of the uh, project. I understand that uh, in this regard, the administration and also the um, architectural services department said that uh, they would be doing more of uh, this um, in the future. I really hope that the bureau director can also respond to this because that's what um, the amendment is about. It's not just about the ASD. It's about um, other departments using public funds. For example, hospital authorities. They should also adopt a similar approach so that we can give more support to SMEs. 
so that they can grow more healthily. With regard to Dr. Wong's suggestion that uh, we should introduce environmental protection elements uh, and also social benefit elements in order to promote uh, waste reduction, carbon reduction, carbon uh, emission reduction, and also we should support the disadvantage and so on. I would be prepared to support those as well. But then we will have to be more careful about uh, putting that into practice. We have to make sure that uh, the effect is such that uh, the tendering system will become um, very complicated with regard to the track record and also eligibility requirements of the con uh, of the contractors. It may become excessively high to the extent that uh, SMEs and also startups might find it difficult to join. And in making uh, and in giving scores on social benefit elements, uh, we should not be inclined towards uh, the larger companies. So these are the things that we will have to pay attention to. These are my um, remarks. I support the two amendments. Thank you. Mm, Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury. Mr. President, once again, I thank Mr. Tony Chair for the motion and uh, Mr. Duncan Chiu and Dr. Stephen Wong for their amendments. I have a feeling that in, we actually same share the same uh, view. And I thank members for telling me some first-hand uh, experience and uh, examples around the world. And this will be very conducive to our further refining the uh, system in the future. In the following, the Under Secretary for Development and myself will give a consolidated response for the procu on the procurement policy for non-works and public works um, projects and the tender system. Now, just now, uh, our members ask whether we have the data for Lois with the wind. Out, uh, since 1994, after we improved the marking scheme and that for technical weighting it will be increased from 50 to 70 percent and that the uh, price score will be lowered to 30 to 50 percent. 90 percent of our goods and services procured have adopted this new marking scheme and over 70 percent of the winning bids uh, have the highest technical score. So in fact, it's not the case that uh, it's the lowest bid wins. We do not just have regard to the uh, tender price element. And like other members said, we are not only the user, we are also um, the uh, example of uh, how we attach importance to social elements. So we consider not only the um, price element, uh, we also place emphasis on the overall positive value of procurement. And our policy is to emphasize innovation and we encourage more SMEs and startups to take part in procurement. As mentioned by members just now, in the current epidemic, whether it is possible to procure uh, locally, and in fact, for face mask production, uh, most of the winning bidders are local companies. And we also have a QR code scanner uh, that is the product developed by a local IT enterprise. So as a matter of um, procedure and policy, how do we further encourage SMEs to take part in our tender and procurement exercises? As mentioned before, we encourage procuring department to attach great importance to innovation and that we should not just make reference to the past performance of uh, bidders and that um, there should be a pre-tender market research and we should also invite non-binding expression of interest exercises before inviting tenders so that we can better understand the goods and services in the market and draw up assessment criteria that do not exclude SMEs and startups. The other point is, uh, as mentioned by many members before, we invite departments to split large contracts into smaller ones as far as possible to facilitate participations of SMEs and lower, lower the risk of over-concentration of government contracts. It's not just about splitting contracts. In the process of tender, tendering or procurement, 
We also simplify the tender documents to avoid setting over prescriptive retirements so as to relieve the burden of tenderists and avoid unnecessarily disqualifying tenderists from participation in government department. As Dr. Hong pointed out, apart from SMEs, we, all, we want to safeguard the rights of uh, labor, laborers. And in fact, as of September 2020, for the non-skilled uh, contracts awarded by the government, um, laborers have benefited from the new measure under in, uh, rolled out in April 2019, and there was a net increase of 14 percent in the wage level of non-skilled workers engaged by service contractors. So we provide incentive in the marketing scheme for service contracts to encourage service contractors to safeguard reasonable rights for non-skilled workers. And a number of members mentioned, including Mr. Chiu, that um, that we also need to have regard to the payment and after awarding the contract. And we uh, encourage departments to adopt a phased payment approach where possible in settling the payment arrangements and ensure timely payment in order to relieve pressure on SMEs contractors' cash flow. So in terms of develop, uh, helping SMEs in the development and enhancing their competitiveness, we have a series of subsidy schemes. Now, uh, Mr. Sunny Tan mentioned how we should avoid being too passive. We need to act proactively and conduct market sounding exercises. And on a regular basis, we continue to hold um, digital technology sourcing fairs so that and when we have an idea what departments need, we can then match their demand um, with uh, what is available in the market to enhance the overall effectiveness. All in all, we actively consider the invaluable input by members, and that uh, we'll continue to dis discuss with the procurement departments, and on this basis, continue to improve our tendering procurement system so that the procuring departments will be able to meet our policy objective while providing a good example for uh, the private sector and public bodies. I will invite the Under Secretary for Development to uh, respond. Under Secretary for Development. President, I would like to thank many members for their valuable comments on the motion. And now, and I would like to make a brief supplement to the tender for public works projects. As stated by the Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury, we've always adhered to the principle of best economic efficiency and open and fair competition when procuring public works and engineering consultancy projects with clear and definite procedures and practices. When evaluating tenders, we have never been based on the lowest bidder wins criteria. In addition to considering the bid price, we'll also examine the technical capabilities and performance of the bidders, including the bidder scores in areas such as innovation and creativity, environmental protection, and sustainable development and the use of digital technology. The technical score of public works projects can account for up to 50 to 60 percent of the overall score, while the technical score of construction and engineering related consultancy contracts can be up to 70 percent. In order to prevent bidders from rushing to bid at a low price, we have a mechanism to eliminate unreasonably low bids. And in the past, this mechanism has been enforced. And the technical score plays a major role in improving quality. 40% of a public projects not awarded to the lowest bidder. For the engineering consultancy contracts, about 60% of those not awarded to the lowest bidder. And for the uh, engineering consultancy contracts, at about 57% of those not awarded to the lowest bidder. In fact, the Development Bureau reviews and revises the existing tender mechanism and assessment requirements from time to time. For example, we have noticed that in the past, due to the fierce market competitions, some consultancies submit lower than market bids for engineering consultancy contracts, which hampered the health development of the industry. Therefore, after a review, the Development Bureau has optimized the mechanism and introduced a point deduction system to deduct points for bids whose bid price is 80% lower than the median bid price, so the consultants cannot obtain high marks through low bid prices. 
to focus on their technical proposals in order to improve the quality of consulting services in the long run the industry can develop healthily. In addition, we also pay attention to participation of contractors or consultants of different scales in public works projects. In this regard, we have divided public works and cons construction or engineering consultancy contracts into different groups by type and estimated tender amount so that companies of varying sizes can participate in tenders on a level playing field. In terms of contractual arrangements, where practicable, we will split large-scale engineering projects into multiple smaller and more manageable contracts so that small and medium-sized companies have more opportunities. For public works, we have adjusted the upper limit of the tender amount of small and medium-sized contractors to further enhance their chances of participating in tenders. For public works and engineering consultancy contracts, we've adjusted the maximum contract amount that small and medium-sized contractors and Group 2 construction and related consultancies can undertake to further their chances of awarded tenders. In recent years, we have also introduced some measures to increase job opportunities in small and medium-sized consultancies. For example, in some suitable design and build engineering and consultancy contracts, we require contractors and consultancies to employ architectural consultancies from Association of Architectural Practices and the Hong Kong Institute of Architects list of band three architectural consultants to at least take part some of the engineering design work in the project. The Development Bureau has also notified other relevant bureau and departments for the government-funded projects developed by NPGO. Band three architectural consultants are eligible to bid for the relevant consultancy projects. Regarding environmental protection, the government has been actively promoting low carbon construction, co emission reduction, and green procurement, including adoption of recycled and green building materials. In addition, the Development Bureau and the Environmental Bureau has also formulated a joint technical circular on the use of renewables and energy saving technologies in green government buildings to provide clear guidelines for proposed development projects at the design stage. In promoting innovative technologies, apart from encouraging bidders to adopt innovative technologies through the tendering system, we also use the Construction Industry Innovation and Technology Fund to subsidize the wider use of innovative construction methods and new technologies in the industries, including SMEs. I'll always keep pace with the times can choose to optimize the current mechanism so that large, medium, and small companies in the construction industry have the opportunity to participate in the bidding. And through various measures, we enhance industry level and capacity and contribute to the development of Hong Kong's future infrastructure. President, once again, I would like to thank Mr. Tony Chair for moving this motion and Mr. Duncan Chiu and Mr. Stephen Wong for moving their amendments and the uh, comments by other members. I so submit. I now invite uh, Mr. Duncan Chu to move his amendment. Mr. President, I move my amendment. So the motion is, for um, well, those in favor of uh, Mr. Duncan Chu's uh, amendment, please raise their hands. Those against, please raise their hands. I think the motion, the question is, uh, uh, is approved uh, by the majority of the members present. I declare the motion or the amendment passed. Dr. Wong Yunshan. As Mr. Duncan Chiu's amendment has been passed, uh, you may now move your further amendment. President, I move my further amendment to be passed. Uh, the question is uh, that uh, the amendment moved by Dr. Wong Yunshan be passed. Uh, will those in favor please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is passed by, major by the majority of members present. I declare the amendment passed. The question before us is uh, Mr. Tony Chess' motion being amended uh, by Mr. Lung Kan Chiu and uh, Dr. Wong Yun Shan be passed. Uh, will those in favor please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of the members present. I declare the amended motion passed. Uh, I, the meeting is now adjourned, and uh, the next council meeting will be held uh, next Wednesday at 11. Thank you.